Hello and welcome back to Tier Mila 2023. We are getting set and ready for the women's relay here in Falafio and we have loads of teams already lining up here in this arena. We are actually in the new ice hockey arena. We've got a commentary position high in the rafters to have a great view over the change over here. And we're going to talk you through the five uh, legs over the next few hours. Those are the stats about what we're going to see. Those estimated winning times for the youth, they were running maybe slightly quicker than they expected. So we will see what happens when uh, all of those five women head out into the terrain. They're all lining up uh, in the arena right now, of course, based on the result from last year. So um, we have those top teams on that front row. They're going to be walked out of the arena. You can see just in the picture here, that's the route going out just kind of going off the bottom of the picture now is the route out of the arena in towards the terrain uh, and they will be heading uh, up north towards the terrain. It's the, also the route they run back into this arena. A unique thing for this, n the most northern ever uh, Tiamila. So really, really excited to get this one underway. Here we have the top teams then lining up all ready to go and there's loads of uh, runners in contention there we can talk about some of these these top 10 teams on the the first row there there is yeah lot orienting missing carolyn olsen though today uh, Cecilia Anderson will lead off uh, the Ludinger team and these are the top 10 teams from last year Cecilia Calandri takes the first leg for Calvin Rasti, the French national team runner. Lisa Orkerson for Huxvana. But is this the favorite team, Jonas? This team from uh, EFK, Yotabury, IFK, Gothenburg? It's definitely one of the big favorites today. Uh, if you ask me personally, I say yes, it's, it's the biggest favorite, but we have other good teams. Mm -hmm. Uh, of course, uh, you see them lined up uh, regarding the result from last year. So uh, they are, we have many, many, many good teams. One of them is Sturatuna. If they make it through the first two legs, because they have such a strong finish on the last three, Ukokore, in my opinion, one of the yeah best teams today as well. Uh, Vilma von Rysenstjerna on the first leg. And another team, of course, the winners from last year, uh, with Anna Ulvensen, uh, New Dalens, uh, big favorites. Uh, but there are other teams that have good chances. Uh, Alfta Ösa is one of these. Kalavan Rasti is a good team. Tampren Pyrinto mm, lost. Uh, they don't have Vendla Harju in the team, which is a big loss for them. Yeah, I think and she's ill. She's got flu or something, it looks like. So, yeah, a, a huge loss for, the, for that and, team, and I think. One other team, like... Not really relay like we have s haven't seen that much from them, but individually, T Sun has had a great early year and uh, they could be very good today as well. So we've just got one minute to go until we get to the start then, and uh, those maps have been handed out. And what's the atmosphere like then for these first leg runners um, as they line up here? Nerves? I mean, we're talking about nerves for the I youth race. It's the same, th the same thing for these women, even though they've got a lot more experience. This, this right now, is the toughest moment in <laughs> for the runners. You have one minute left. You have the map ready in your hand. You're not allowed to look at it. Uh, mm. They even have to go the same as we have seen in the youth relay. So they're behind this, let's call it a car, uh, going out from the stadium and then they will have like this flying start as we know from cycling or other sports. So it's a bit special of the start, but yeah, right now it's very tense for the runners. Uh, of course they know about this, they, they have been, most of them have been running their first leg before, but it's something special, it really is to run with four club mates just behind mm -hmm. you on the, on the coming legs and you kind of bearing the whole responsibility mm -hmm. for your team. So they are kind of walked out uh, through the reason why we've got this kind of vehicle in front. You can't actually see it. It's because it's so narrow here. So they kind of get pushed together. They will emerge from this actually pretty dark ice hockey arena into the pretty blinding sunlight. It is a 
gorgeous day today uh, pretty warm as well and so they get led out here in the formation these top runners here managing to stay just about information then suddenly this uh vehicle is going to accelerate and we will be off none of them looking at their maps so far let's see if we can capture the moment when they start this relay there they go so the van drives off and here we go the flags are waved and it's the first few teams to head out there into the terrain we've got Cora we've got EF Koyotabay in there as well and so many teams to head out over the next five legs the next four hours plus of orienteering we're going to bring you uninterrupted live coverage every step of the way and as we might expect from Tia Mila, um, even though this is my first Tia Mila, I know that this is an iconic part of the race the big run out with all of the teams in this mass start uh, taking glimpses at their map and, and heading out here with the cheers of all of their club mates. And it's maybe the moment uh, seen over the whole weekend where we have most spectators on site because now the many of the men uh, running later in the men's relay are on site in order to take a glimpse of the arena. Uh, all of the women are here obviously because they're going to run later and uh, if the weather is as good as it is today there is no reason to not be here and join the start of the women's race. So uh, they go past all of these club tents. There you can see several people deep as they uh, chase the, the first runners out in towards the lead. There's uh, uh, Hannah Lundberg, 602 there. She uh, is pretty much from this part of Sweden. And I mean, yeah, yeah, she is. She is from Luleå, which is also in the north, but uh, still a few hours, two hours yeah. away from here. <laughs> Uh, but it's very special because uh, many of the teams here, of the big favorites team, teams, the job as a first leg runner is to keep everything together, to not do any big mistakes, just keep in the group, do a safe race, do a good performance, get back so that the others can build that relay on kind of your performance. But uh, Anna Lundberg. She is yeah. more or less. Yeah. I mean, she's the, she's, I mean, she won, she's she's the one and only star in the team. Second or third, part of the top three in the Swedish league race uh, that was on the Thursday, with a big gap down to fourth. Yeah. I mean, she is a star. And and I mean, she. There's no, no team that has a chance to be in the on the top positions behind her. So she can go for winning this first leg. Everyone else has to be careful bit like yeah having responsibility for the rest of the team but she it's it's a it's a difficult situation not for her but for everyone else because um, should you take the risk maybe overpace a little bit keep the, just behind her try to follow her would you let her go maybe risk that other teams can follow her that's a very difficult question and uh, it's it's a difficult situation because she doesn't have that responsibility but mm -hmm. you have if you're in the top team so you can see that is the start triangle there it's an alpine uh, ski slope and that's actually um one of the jumps um I tell you what, from the bottom of that slope, it looks steeper even than it looked on that co that picture there. Um, and they've got to do a, a big old climb, as we can see, uh, towards just going out of the start. You see it kind of flattens off. It's um, not. It's got a very varied profile, uh, this, this hill, certainly in this open area under the ski lifts as well. So, but Hannah Lundberg has made a good start there. And how... How important is it to be one of those teams at the start on the kind of first or second kind of lines uh, as, as we saw them line up at the start? How important is that? Um, in this case today, you mean if, if you're a top team and you're a bit behind? Yeah. Uh, I mean, in this case today, it's, it, it's quite a good... Uh, start if you have to start a bit behind. You have seen it with Hannah Lundberg. Mm. I mean, she wasn't starting in one of the front rows. You have this climbing, you have this uphill. It's on high speed from the very beginning. You see the runners in front of you. There's no risk to lose them in a green area. Uh, so if you have to fight your way up to the uh, yeah to the top positions, then it's that's a very good start. That's how you want to have it. Um, but still, I mean, you have to you have to spend some energy to, to get through and it's tough to climb. Now they are already, they have been running for five minutes and it was all uphill. 
and <laughs> it's now they have to start reading the map. So it's like the the course planners they really over accelerated their like speed, and now they start orienteering when they already are a little bit tired, uh, which makes it of course a little bit diff more difficult. But that's that's it's the same on every first leg more or less. That's exactly what you have to handle. And you can see here, it's quite a stony area just uh, the, the forest here you have many of these bare rocks uh, of this but it, it's good runnability but you have to be careful uh, sometimes it's a bit hard to keep coordination you can see it here uh, it's not just reading the map and run all the time here it's quite okay but in other parts you have more stones more loose stones that make it more difficult uh, to run and read the map at the same time so a lot of the uh, top teams all taking this route. You can see that they did split up, um, but Calvin Rasti is in there with Cecile Colandri. Uh, uh, Jotteberg Mayona is there with the zebra leggings. Uh, we've got uh, Renan in the lead. That's uh, Hannah Lemberry there. You can there. see that Tisanen is going another way staying on the street there you can see it in the very west of the picture in the, the very left but we can see even from the the start control they were splitting up into different directions so uh we'll have to figure out what you know wait and see what that happens and certainly know that there there are therefore different options to take uh towards as they as they keep heading into the terrain yeah, you can see it's still Hannah Lundberg uh, deciding what pace everyone has to go <laughs> here. <laughs> and and she's, I mean, she's so young, but she's so uh, kind of, well, I was about, I'm not going to say familiar necessarily in this position uh, on, on the first leg of a major relay like this, but certainly leading the way and, and pushing the pace and knowing how to pace that. I mean... Uh, we follow her internationally on like World Cup and, and World Championships and European Championships and there we always say that she's unexperienced yes. she is, but mm -hmm. compared to many of the runners yeah. here she's very experienced in big competitions so it's kind of a different situation here, situation here. suddenly uh, I don't think that many around her will uh, underestimate her on this mm, first leg no because way. she's definitely uh, let's, say, let's put, it, put it that way in any other top team she wouldn't be running the first leg it's just due to the position that she wants uh, they want her to be able to to run with other good runners and maybe later in the competition she wouldn't have the chance to yeah yeah exactly with a i mean i'm sure we're going to talk about um kind of tactics and who you put on which leg but but maybe for a smaller club like hers then yeah you you want to front load your runners rather than maybe back load like Stora tuna have done and you can also see that i mean it it looked kind of tricky when they were running into the forest here because it was this semi-open many bare rock from from above it's hard to say if it's difficult or not but if it zoom out a little bit you see that it Basically, it was all about having direction and then you get to this huge power line <laughs> uh, that helps you. So this start here really was just physical. You have to climb a lot. You have to kind of uh, yeah, have a, go on high speed in the beginning, find your right position. And now uh, you're heading into the forest, basically. You see also that Stura Tuna already, right, already in the, the, the left of the picture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but we, we also have to say, I mean, we don't have GPS devices on all of the runners here. So even if you see a gap in the picture, it doesn't mean that there has to be a gap uh, out in the forest. There can be many runners in between that don't bear a GPS device. Yeah, that's a, a really good point. We've got 100 GPS units um, out there uh, ready to use. I think 28 different teams are going to have uh, GPS units is what I've heard and three per team as well. So they get swapped around and then by the time we get to the later legs, it's going to have those top runners being uh, tracked. Let's follow some more of the teams then, mm -hmm. get a different sense of the terrain. Yeah. Behind, Iko Hoppe, Iko Hoppe's Poikena and Iko. So you can kind of look for the position here in the group uh, I can tell you that Rienen in the very top it's Hanna Lundberg uh, Iktisa Sandra Grosberga I spotted that right in the picture before
And this is so characteristic of, of this first leg. But, I mean, just looking at that running camera picture there, the visibility is very, very good, at least yeah. in this bit of the forest, right? Yeah, it is. But uh, you see as well, it's spreading out quite a lot. Usually, if it's a bit rougher terrain, it's if, if visibility is lower, then you line up. So everyone is running behind each other. Now it's spreading out. You're running, yeah, kind of in a line, but in, like beside each other. And it makes it a bit harder to see, uh, to find the right runners around you in order to get to the right first control. Of course, as long as you're doing your job and as long as you're having good direction, you check off uh, some features on the way, you're fine. But if you're one of the runners that has to overpace a little bit, you're already uh, yeah, uh, uh, struggling with the speed a little bit, then you have to be so, so careful in order to not just trust the others and hope for the best because it might pay off once it <laughs> might pay off twice but it won't three times no absolutely not this, these were the pictures then from the first few steps you can see uh, uh, okay Cora Vilma von Krusenfreiner out towards the front initially but it was the pace of Hannah Lundberg using those long legs to get up this slope. Really strong work. And uh, a lot of the clubs have been able to kind of like book out seats here in this arena. So they've all got their own little place where they can all sit. And to be honest, it's probably quite a good option to be sitting in this arena. You've got good views of all the screens. And actually it's it is quite warm out there. If you're running kind of later, you want to just take a little bit of shelter, keep cool and everything. Wow. I mean... They're dinosaurs. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure whoever is in there, Mr. Dinosaur, Ms. Dinosaur, uh, was basically wearing that costume to, to be in this yeah, picture that, right now. I mean, that guy is very happy he doesn't have to be outside because it would definitely yeah. be too warm outside. <laughs> Uh, but here, in here, it's actually quite chilly. It's really a nice hockey arena. Mm. You can you can feel that. But yeah, they don't good. need I mean, to heat an ice hockey arena. No, it's no, like no. yeah. But it's good. I mean, it's it's good, and it, for many of the runners who will run later on, it might be better to sit down a little bit, uh, not be out in the sun too much. But you can see it's uh, still many of the runners decided to be in their club tents outside. There's a small camping where you can be. Uh, and it's kind of the the normal Tio Mila atmosphere mm. out there. Yeah, yeah. And you, for, for you, that's the, the normal thing. <laughs> that's I, actually the way it usually is. Well, yeah. Well, okay. So we have to say that this is my first um, Tio Mila. I, and I will be teasing you throughout yeah, well, the night Yeah, well, that's fine. I, well, I am slightly embarrassed that I've got to this point in my orienteering career and not been to Tio Mila or Yukula, which I will go to in uh, a month, about a month's time. I, I, I swear, honestly, I have been orienteering my whole life. But... Um, <laughs> Uh, there are no British teams here at Tio Mila. Yeah, there are quite a lot of British change, runners. Actually. Oh, yeah, well, we should change it. But it's, I'm not going to lie, it's quite hard to get 10 runners together. Oh, but I'm um, very happy to you're go. not running now. <laughs> yeah, <'cause> no. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd, I'd, well, I'd get lost so much out in that forest. You'd no, just be there the, for the whole time. I want time. to sit here alone. Yeah, no, no, exactly. <laughs> no. I, I would be in the forest for two hours. You just have two <laughs> hours sitting here trying to commentate by yourself. Um, which in a whole... Uh, you know, four and a half hour broadcast is too much anyway. <laughs> so let's wait here. This is, uh, we're waiting at the second control for the women to come. 2.6 kilometers, 14 and a half minutes of running time. And uh, this we expect Hannah Lundberg Yeah, to come I think first. we do. It's blue and red. And I think it could be Hannah Lundberg for Rienen from Luleå. A bit low here. Yeah, you can see that the visibility some. changed a little mm -hmm. bit compared to the pictures before. It's not yep. Anna Lundberg first. It's, uh, it's Victoria Hester Bjornstad, yep. I think. For Gothenburg. Uh -huh. And Kora as well. Helped Anna Lundberg out here a little bit. Kora. Vilma von Krusenfreiner there. So pictures just slightly behind. Uh, you have to be minor two, a mixed team as well. Netherlands, obviously last year's winners. Here's Ludinger. S 
So not through, you know, maybe as thick and fast as we might expect, really, for our first TV split. Halsing and Sinistayat, who for two legs were leading the youth relay this morning. Mm -hmm. 12 teams without 40 seconds, and now mm. it's a gap here. We have Linnea. First team with uh, Christine Melby Jakobsen. Then we had. Uh, then uh, uh, so you have Jela up there as well, for Sherpings. Calvin Drasti was there as well, Cecilia Calon. Uh -huh. Watch out for Calvin Drasti. First team, Svina Aumu. Uh, Halden. This looks like the yeah, EF Core uh, you have to very second team, which is also, I mean, a very, very strong second team they have as well. Two Linné teams is at the same point. And then another gap as well. So 231 teams are going to be heading out there. Oh, well, Norskut in that mix as well. Big group here coming all together. And obviously we know you can Maybe look yep. at their numbers and check that uh, basically corresponds to where they were last time. Have you Yet, uh, because we've seen sure. them going on another route towards the first control. Oh, not we haven't seen them, I guess. No, I don't think so. Really many teams coming here together. It was a small gap in the top and then... Uh, we had a group of around 15 runners uh, to another gap, and now everyone more or less coming together here. Yeah, in a big old group. I mean, you can look down the list, notice there's quite a lot of non-Scandinavian runners uh, often on first leg. Um, does that, is that, they tend yeah, to get put on that leg for... Um, for a particular reason, is that just a coincidence that, that there's a lot of uh, non-Scandinavian runners on the first leg? Um, well, I don't think it's a coincidence. Uh, often the, the reason is uh, runners, the international runners that come here to this relay, they come, they travel here like the day, just the days before the relay. And mm. it's hard to adapt. If you come from continental terrain, for example, it's very hard to adapt to the Scandinavian uh, terrain. You have to do, it's a totally different kind of orienteering. And it's a little bit easier to adapt to a first leg because um, you're not all on your own. There's no risk that you don't have anyone around you, so you can get a little bit help with that. So it's not really that... Um, I mean, it's not that you don't trust the runners, that they couldn't perform well. You have many international runners also on the last leg or second last leg, but it's a bit easier. You can put a small bit of responsibility to others as well. They will help you. If, if everyone else goes another way than you thought, then you might just double check your position and see if you're right or not. And that might be enough help in order to perform well uh, here. But it's, I think it's mostly due to the adaption to the terrain and the, sh the short amount of time you have to do, that, to do so. Yeah, very, very short. Those are the standings then at the first TV point. The first leg is 6.7 kilometers, estimated winning time of 46 minutes. Uh, and it is forked, of course, as well. It is the second shortest of all of the um, courses as well, all of the, the legs there. So as we kind of look behind, I think we just had a tizzle and punch uh, at that con the TV control as well. So watch out for your team. That's how we are currently lining up. We're gonna get another TV control later on around this course as well for the changeover back here in this arena. 
and we'll try and do our best. Uh, here we go, Tamperin Purinta in to 73rd, Lotto Kohola there on the first leg. We'll try and watch out for maybe surprises, um, either good surprises or <laughs> less good surprises, or should I maybe kindly say, um, to uh, just kind of point out who is going up and who is going kind of down in the standings as well. See Mina Kaupi on the near hit the picture for Lachten Soon is that Okay, Ravine and Camp. Legs then. This is the Ravine and Camp, yeah. And here we have some GPS. So now we get the first glimpse of the map here. Uh, between control three and four, they are just about at control four right now. So this is a replay. And you can see Rianen, it's Hanna Lundberg. You can also see Kore and IFK Göteborg and the other top teams that we had uh, at the TV control. You can see that the, the runnability here is quite okay. Otherwise, you wouldn't see er everyone glued to the red line. Uh, well, there's some... Interesting yeah, part cool. here, uh, because you can feel that there's it's kind of a change in vegetation when you suddenly have these green mm. bits, uh, semi-open area as well. You see the vegetation boundary there. Um, it, it You can kind of feel that there's a change coming. You can also see that Rian and uh, Anna Lundberg is running faster than the others, but gets a little bit off direction every now and then, so the others can be... They can close the gap again. No problems for any of the top teams. Let's see behind here. You can see that they're splitting up now. You have got Göteborg going more to the west here. And you see there's that vegetation boundary there. You can see different ways people are maybe trying to go around it. Uh, those green vegetation lines as well. And of course, we. the reason why we can't show more of the mm. map here is because... Uh, yeah, we'll see similar po similar parts yeah. of uh, the leg later on. And uh, we on don't want to. We we've, we've got to be really careful, don't we, to not give away too much. I mean, we I, I mean I've, to be honest, I haven't seen the second mm. leg, so I don't really know where. <laughs> to go, but just to be safe. To be okay, safe. but but normally in terms of you know when we're when we're at a World Cup, a World Championships. Uh, all of the athletes are in quarantine, so they exactly. can't watch the broadcast, they can't see any maps, so we can talk as freely as we like about what might be coming up, what we think might be good, what we think might be bad. Um, but we know everybody is going to be watching the broadcast at home uh, when maybe they're a fifth leg runner and they're, they're still in their accommodation. They might be having a little watch or, uh, you know, they m might for whatever reason be... Uh, you know, they, they, they're going to try and ca ca get a catch glimpses of the map. Of course you are. But uh, this mm -hmm. is very but interesting. But we, we can say, I mean, you can talk when you have the map on. Oh, so obviously. let's do that. <laughs> uh, you can see that uh, it's spreading out a lot right now. You can see Vestavik going all the way to the east uh, in order to get a few meters on this path. You get Iktisa, that's, mm, they might head out to the path as well, but maybe not uh, in a 90 degrees angle as uh, Vestavik. Rian and trying to stay more or less on the line. Same for IFK Göteborg, the team we have seen going a bit more to the west, uh, avoiding the screen bit. Uh, kind of the same route as we have, so the Telje and Jala running. Just a few seconds behind. And you can see that the terrain changes again here. You had this um, kind of... yeah. Slope here, uh, not very steep one, but he had a slope with few details, and now it changes. You got to this path, and then it's semi open, and you see that uh, all these dotted areas, very stony areas, uh, and more paths again. And this seems to be, I mean, just from looking at the old maps, getting kind of first glimpses of this course, the, the terrain around here is a whole load of nothing, <laughs> kind of flattish, not very many features, a few boulders and stuff around and then a whole load of really tiny contours really detailed contours and then a whole load of nothing again mm. and you can see i mean if you look at the, it's kind of good that you have this flight picture a bit to the right as well 
uh, outside the map, then you can see that this yellow bits when you have it uh, and you compare it to the flight picture it's it's really they are really open so there is mm. really good visibility it's almost always bare rock under so it's very good runnability so that can be something that you can use in order to navigate and also in order to plan uh, fast tracks actually but uh, I mean of course uh, towards control 5 you can also just hit towards the track and then you get a real track yeah. <laughs> that helps you <laughs> so maybe not on this control but but you can see certainly that the patch of vegetation that was just after control 4 really like forced people to split I mean nobody wanted to go through that uh, and, and interesting here as well we have seen Vestavik they were running quite an extreme route mm. out from control 4 but it was paying off uh, they are still up there they didn't lose time on this one Still have uh, about the same teams up there as we had at control two, three, and four. But there's really, I mean, obviously, we don't have all the teams tracked here. We've got to s remind you of that that we've only got um, the teams you can see up there uh, being tracked, but. Does seem to be a, s a couple of groups, and now we're going to see them at control mm. five. And you see it now here. You can really feel how these yellow bits are in the forest. Very open, uh, bare rock, uh, good visibility as well. Ah, uh, this is not control five because they've already got there on the uh, with by the time the tracking would have got there. So it's control six. Looks like control six. Yeah, exactly what we were just talking about. The is the visibility, the rocks. Um, you can kind of, I think you can picture it quite strongly from, from the map there, even if you're fairly uh, unfamiliar with the terrain in this part of the world. Very soon they should be here mm -hmm. uh, at this TV control after 4.4 kilometers, 27 oh. minutes of running time. And here we have, is it Karlskrona, maybe? This is Rienen. It's Ian Alma uh, and Karlskrona. So it was uh, Alma Svenrud uh, punching there in first position, then Tisa in fourth. Actually, they can have quite a strong team as well. I feel that they have been performing pretty well at uh, the Finnish re Relay League uh, earlier this spring. Quite an international team. With uh, Sandra Grossberga on this first leg. You see that, uh, yeah, the, the running cam, you can feel it, that it's shaky. Uh, it's a sh shaky surface under, so you have to be very careful here when you run. So a few of the stones here are quite loose. And it's the concentration that that requires that makes it so tough, as well as the, as well as well, the I mean, this, chance of going over on your ankle. This would be really tough if the visibility would have been lower. Now oh. you, can, you can spot... Uh, something quite far away at on the horizon and just run towards it and then you can focus on coordination but you can also see that everyone everything looks quite the same here so you have to be careful with direction you've seen that actually in the u3 mm. lay that they struggled up here in this area um, looks good for the two runners in the lead or for the runners in the lead very good this is a gap of about a minute and a half this is kind of rusty yeah and Rusty Yusit from Finland. Sevedalen, I think. Showing hard here. But there is a gap between those first teams and this chasing group. Yeah, they've really managed to, to lose this chasing group. You know, the leader of this group will definitely not have the, the back of the, the next ones. Hazen in there. Here's uh, Ryman Rickmenti. Megan Carter Davis maybe catching up a little few more places just ahead of uh, Fiona Bunn on for Soti Tele Nick Vaughan.
Okay. And obviously, yeah. I have a bit of a British bias knowing a lot of the runners from, from my country, which is, I guess, why I asked the question about a lot of non-Scandinavian runners running that first leg. We've got Fiona Bunn, Megan Carter-Davis, Cecilia Anderson uh, all running first leg for, for their teams. It's quite common for, you know, you know, every, pretty much every top international runner, if they're not from Scandinavia, will also have a Scandinavian club. There's a second team for uh, Dolans, I think. So we have the top 50 here. The second TV control all within, let's say, three and a half minutes. Linné one there, down mm. in the 46. I'm not sure if we've seen the likes of, say, Storatuna through. There's Ludinger. Uh, Another of the Halden teams. So Let's have another look at here. Play usually, ah, see some mistakes. Yes. That's the reason why you have Linnea quite far behind, also leading her, mm. just overshooting the control a little bit to the south there. Uh, then you have to be very careful when you go in there. But I mean, you would have you get help there from this vegetation border. Uh, it really, I mean, it comes right in time to do the last preparation towards this control. Mm. You should really be aiming for that, take help of these attack points you can get and spot that. It's especially important that relays like this. I mean, usually um, in individual races, you can be a bit more attacking, but in a relay in such an important race on the first leg, where you don't really have to fight for every, every second, uh, to build in that safety and you have to look for these attack points in order to get right. Uh, I think we just saw, saw a tuna through there, mm. four and a half minutes down. It's uh, Maya Mert on the first leg. And we kind of talked when we were talking through kind of the runners and riders, the favorites that it, we you, we know that they've got their best runners on their, their last few legs. Uh, they have a great team from yeah. the third leg to the finish with uh, Mario Lausen. Uh, and to and to Alexanderson. So it's yeah, it, I mean it's a great team, but they have to be they they not allowed to be too far behind because we have other good teams as well. Even though we have seen to uh, Alexanderson closing some incredible incredible gaps earlier. Remember race in uh, Tio Mila in Gothenburg where she was heading out uh, like six or seven minutes behind, uh, and still being able to win it. So at the 4.4k mark, that's how we stand then. Hopefully picked out a couple of the teams mm -hmm. who we would expect to be a little bit more up there, or at least in terms of the overall team performance. Actually, it's not too far to go from here, from the TV control we have seen to the finish. few more controls, but they're definitely on the way back already towards this hockey stadium. Okay, so we can now start to pick up some of these runners on our drone shots as well. We can see some on the tracks. Sleeves it like they're lit uh, cross-country skiing tracks, I think, as well, that carve big, a wide path through the forest. It's quite easy to spot Iktisa. They have a, quite a nice blue shirt to spot. I think this is Erianen, Hanna Lundberg, in the lead. Yeah. Could be FK Göteborg. In second, I think, and then it is Sandra Grosberga for Itisa in third. In the light blue shirt. I think New Dalen behind there. Vastavik also amongst there as well. Yes, Here's a group, Calvin Rasti. Yes, indeed. A very distinctive white with the kind of red. Rasti, you sit, I think, there as well, to the right. 
But the those are the leaders on the way to the third last control. Yep. Big, uh, big run up the hill to start. Lots of downhill controls towards the finish, and that's where it can. You know, we know downhill orienteering is always really tough. But look at Hannah Lumberry go. She's, mm. I mean, but that's, her that's speed is incredible. That's what I was talking about before. I mean, she can really go for the victory for this on this first leg. Uh, the other ones, I mean, no one needs to follow her here because I don't think that any of the other top teams sees. Uh, Rienen is one of a, like as a big threat for them, mm. uh, so there's no need to risk anything uh, in order just to win this first leg. So I think this is exactly the right thing to do. Just let her go, do your own, focus on your own orienteering and get your controls right here. You can see the stop and go by Yevko Yetebori, like that very much. When you can see that, instead of just heading into this dense area, you take an extra look especially in the relay that's important and then you go three through uh, and do the work towards your control so they drop off the main track then and you can see here's uh victoria has the beyond said if caught you have to going through this open area and you can see on the there again maybe yeah. with a small mistake I think so, yeah, I think uh, possibly there, because she was a good 20 meters ahead. Yeah, more than 20 meters. Yeah. Could almost have been 20 seconds there. So we are waiting for IFK Göteborg, Rienen Iktisa, Westervik, Nydalen. Is there any other teams? I think it's about that. Let's see who's going to win. It's uh, almost always quite prestigious to win this first leg, and it looks <laughs> good for EFK Göteborg. here at the second last control. So nearly here at the end of this first leg and looks like it's the the right orienteering for the favorite team here. EF Court, you have to be very, very, very strong just on that little uh, last kind of control going down the slope. And it's a lot of running now. And here are the second leg uh, runners just warming up now. There's a second leg runner for uh, Reynen, who Hannah Lundberg will go and hand over to. But it's these top three now all making these final stretches towards this arena. They're going to be cheered back in. But here is Victoria Hester-Bjornstad, who has done exactly her job here on the first leg. Mm, very impressive. Uh, you could see, I really like that when you could see when she was heading down this slope into this second, third last control, really using the stop and go in order to get right. You could see that uh, Hannah Lundberg uh, did a small mistake there, losing this extra seconds losing her lead there and uh, perfectly well done job and uh, this puts uh, IFK Göteborg in an even better position now because it's not only that they're up there it's also that they get the confidence their preparation was good <laughs> everything is kind of prepared for them and now they have to get through it's a very good start for them uh, after a very mm. successful youth re relay already. A very successful youth relay. Can they take more than one um, win here today at this TME Love? They've made the best possible start. I think they are the out and out favourites. Here's Miritrana Erdem, who's going to, the Danish runner, who will head out on leg number two. It's the shortest one of all of them, just six kilometres. We're expecting 41 minute running time. And goodness me, they're running way quicker than the organisers thought. 39 minutes and 45 seconds goes way quicker than the 46 minutes we expect on this uh, winning time we expect on here. Oh, and she hasn't got the right map. 
Oh, Hannah Lundberg has not got the right maps. Maybe she's lost. Has she lost her bib? No, she knows that she's 602. And I mean, it's it's not only. Well, the. Uh, nobody's helping her. There you go. No, somebody's found it. Oh, that is the gutting. Problem is, the thing is, it's not only a problem for her. It's definitely a problem for the team that's missing the map. If it's yeah. one of the top teams, but maybe if she took it from a totally oh. different place, uh, let's hope this team is about to come in five to ten minutes when the map is there again. Oh, that is, um, yeah, that is not what you want to do. But you, you've just done the orienteering. You are the stress of having to change over. Nidalens then in towards the finish. This is Cora as well, I think here. It is indeed. Vilma mm. from Krusenkwerna punching there into seventh position for Kore. Uh, 1.23 behind and Moa Enmark for the second team of Göteborg Majorna. Yeah. Into eighth position. She's very <laughs> well known for being uh, very, very strong on first legs. So we, she will hand well, Vilma von Krusenkwerna handing over to Matilda Eriksson and... Um, is this is the first, the second leg. So we've got six kilometers, maybe 41 minutes Can winning time. Here. There you go. This is what happened. She gets, leaves the map back to one of the officials here, uh, trying to find mm -hmm. her own map. And I mean, that's something. Ah. But do they you know in advance the that. order of yeah. where they are? I mean, what I would do is I would go here come to the stadium before you can see this of course you can't go all the way to this wall where you get the map but you can kind of, I think you can kind of spot the place where your map is in advance so mm. uh, but it also shows you that it's I think quite many of the favorite teams have mm. done that kind of preparation mm. <laughs> uh, maybe she wasn't as pre prepared as others Okay, let's pick out some of the more top teams. We've got Calvin Rasti there, just about to hand over. That is Cecilia Calandri handing over to Siri Silverloinen. Uh, the second uh, EF Core team handing over as well. Uh, Megan Cart Davis, something wrong with there for her team. Maybe she didn't punch the finish. Oh, she didn't punch the finish. <laughs> Just want to check that one. Yeah, I think she was just in the top 10, so pretty good result for the Brits. Running for her uh, Finnish team. The, in Mayden fact, the whole... Yeah, yeah, she didn't punch she the finish. Got punch there. Okay, the thing is, in if the you, UK, you, you always you, hand over and then punch yeah. the finish. If you're very but she's experienced enough to know that she should punch the finish there. I don't know if you're very, very picky if this is... Uh, along the rules or not but I mean oh. uh, she, she definitely passed uh, the finish here so it's I don't think there will be any problems with that yeah we saw Cecilia Laundry handing over there as well it will definitely be an advantage for the second leg runner because she will have a faster time on her leg by about 20 <laughs> 25 seconds at least you got the hand over okay <laughs> like that's the that's the main thing like I think it's more of a drama to not find the map actually other teams to come here. Linea <laughs> third team. We also have uh, Jettebal May, another first team. Ineo, Sävedalen. I think it's the second team. Yes, indeed. And lots of <laughs> shouting there to grab the attention of the next runner. So here are the standings after the first leg. A very, very good start for IFK Göteborg. Maybe the biggest favorite on beforehand. Uh, team never able to win uh, Tio Mila until now. So could be definitely their day today. See that we have the top 30 within um, around four minutes. Quite many teams struggled a bit with this uh, third last control, the one then where they are heading down the slope. Mm. Um, I mean, we've 
seen from so many different races, it's that slope orienteering that's really, really tough. After Ursa uh, just through, they have Natalia Gempeler on the last leg. Lots more top runners to come. And there's Palmer on uh, North in there as well. Have we seen Stora Tuna through yet? No, so it's a I different kind of a nasty team. Let's have a listen to the. Congratulations. Thank you. Can you give us a short summary of the race? Yes, uh, I was uh, this, uh, I, w I was uh, supposed to be very uh, independent in my orienteering, like get my own controls and then use the other good vendors as kind of pacers. And this worked very well for me. I had Hanna and she was uh, running steady. She had some uh, small minor mistakes into the controls, which made me possible to keep her back all the way. And then in the end, I, it, she messed up on yeah, some control and I had like, I had this plan of mine, take my own controls and it worked out well. Is that a tactic you are using to get the pressure from your shoulders a bit? Yes, I think so, yeah. Because we, we talked to your team leader before and we said that Yves Göteborg is a very strong candidate to the, to the victory. Uh, and after this first leg, you feel confident? Uh, I do trust my teammates. I hope they have good experiences today. Uh, what about the terrain, would you say? It's amazing. Like all the trainings we've had, also the Swedish league, it was just a dream terrain, really nice. We saw some parts with a lot of stone on the ground. Was it hard to run or? No, I wouldn't say so. Or, well, maybe, but uh, if you had your plan, you could look up in the terrain and then you could find a nice, nice path to run. Okay, thank you very much and congratulations. Thank you. Victoria Hestabion said there, uh, taking the win then on uh, the first leg, handing over to her teammates who will keep uh, try and keep up that uh, great start. So Miri Trenna Erdem is next. So we've got Simona Abbasold on the long leg. That's an unforked leg. Ellen Monson and Sarah Hugstrom also still to come. And again, they go straight up the hill towards the, uh, the first part of this course. This is the shortest leg for the women. And uh, they look, you look so, yeah, pretty, pretty good. Like, and a lot of the teams kind of maybe splitting up here. We don't really mm. see many teams together. I mean, it's not really the same situation as on the first leg because you don't, you have, you don't have that contact to everyone else around you here. It's not, a, you're kind of not forced to go someone else's speed. You can set up your own pace, you can go your own speed. Uh, you can see that the, the runners are splitting up more. You see these are going more to the left, Vestavik somewhere in between, IFK Göteborg uh, heading quite straight here. Um, it's, it's different, of course, to run those different legs. Yeah, so we've got a kind of a long number one as well. Um, they will head out towards the a kind of a similar part of the terrain. You can see some of those teams really trying to go more direct over the hill, like we saw for some of the first runners. And uh, some of the teams going uh, kind of more round. It's such a big climb that we've got uh, going on. So we've got uh, Hannah Lundberg here. Uh, just talking to us now, you can see on the picture, very fresh from your run. Uh, yeah, I'm so much drama for you on the on the first leg. Was it always a plan you were going to run uh, first leg for for your, for your for Danen? Yeah, I think so. Uh, we uh, we decided it for like a month ago or something. So uh, I really enjoyed running the first leg. So uh, it was fun. And do you have? Does that lead you to have maybe a different tactic or a different mentality starting the first leg when you know you're kind of the strongest runner for your club and you're you're going to hand over? You just want to make your mark on on this relay. Exactly. I I always want to do my best, and uh, that's to pick every control perfect. And I didn't do that today, so mm -hmm. that was maybe not the plan. But uh, <laughs> I tried to to open hard and. Uh, <laughs> run fast all the way into the finish. And this was a tough, I mean, if you're looking at the, we can look at the pictures now, it was a very, very tough um, uphill start for you. Was was the terrain, was the kind of the course what you were expecting? It's pretty, as close to home terrain as you're going to get for yeah, a team yeah, for you. Almost, almost, exactly. Uh, yeah, when I looked at the map, um, 
earlier when we tried to see how the courses uh, would look, we uh, I I, uh, I draw one of these uh, legs like mm-hmm. over the hill, so I was quite prepared for that one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then um, very kind of tricky section. We maybe saw you got maybe 50 meters ahead towards the end, and was there a little mistake towards yeah, the end? Yeah, I did. I did. Uh, I fucked it up when I went down the, down the road, so <laughs> I didn't have full control there. So. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'm not uh, satisfied with that. Yeah, I want to. I want to do it again. But it wasn't. You managed to regain a kind of touch with the the other runners, though. It wasn't. You managed to kind of get everything back together reasonably quickly. It seems. Yeah, I think so. Yes. Yeah, and um, what will you do for the for the rest of the day? Will you keep stay here and watch some of your teammates as well? Uh, I w- for sure will. We have uh, like five uh, team in the women's relay, and then we have. Uh, four younger teams and three uh, in the uh, big relay this evening. So uh, we are uh, really happy to have that many teams. Yeah, and especially like home soil as well. But um, before we let you go, um, I want to ask you quickly about that map uh, changeover at the end. Um, you must have, did you pick up the wrong map? Tell me what happened. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the, it was a man who um, showed me to 502 instead of 602. And yeah, I just looked, okay, two, take it and run. And then yeah. my, uh, my teammate Ella was... Uh, uh, really quick in their head and uh, and uh, screamed to me that this isn't my map. So uh, I'm really really. Did you happy show to... her the number? Yeah, I did. I yeah, did. <laughs> and she saw uh, your, your brain is you know not in the right position at the and end I of the run. So, but luckily so she tired. switched <laughs> on. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And the only thing my coach told me before this uh, race was. Uh, take the right controls and take the right map. I just uh, <laughs> did one of those. <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, basics of relay running, um, but at least at least you know, she noticed you could get the right map because it's, it's exactly. I'm really no. happy for her uh, that she was so uh, so quick. And uh, what's what's your hopes as a team? Um, obviously, you're the, you're the kind of strongest runner in your club. You're going to hand over to the other runners. Um, what what are your hopes as a team? Uh, we are a quite young team. Uh, I think that. Every, I, I'm the oldest one, so uh, <laughs> so I don't know what we have for a goal, but I think we uh, we are he- here to to get better and uh, learn how to run fast against the mm-hmm. other fast girls. So uh, we should see how uh, how long it will take us. An experience building team, yeah, exactly, then. Yeah. Exactly. Thanks very much. Well, yeah. Congratulations as well. Even if you're not totally satisfied, and thanks for having a chat Thank to you us so much. as well. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, let us head back then to, uh, that was the handover. Uh, We will head back then to the competition. Okay, so looking back at then some of the pictures, we've got maybe a little bit of the look across to uh, the first uh, control here on this second leg. Uh, we can see that they've already split up <laughs> a little bit. Uh, we've got uh, Evelyn Oyanaho here, who brought just come back from the first <laughs> leg. How was it for you? Uh, it was really, really tough. I knew I wanted. I knew it was going to be a really tough position to go out in first leg, but mm-hmm. it, it surprised me how tough it was. <laughs> what made it so difficult? The speed, the uh, navigation? Yes, the speed, and then I was a bit shocked that we went almost all the way up the hill. <laughs> so that mm-hmm. was really tough. And then, you know, the, the really high speed of everyone in the group. Yeah, and it was this your, your first time running Team Mila or your first time running first leg? What, what uh, was first time in Team Mila, but I ran the first leg in Yukola or Venla Relay mm-hmm. last year. And you've, you've not got a full team, but you presumably just wanted to go out and enjoy yeah. this terrain and have some fun, yes, right? Yes, exactly. It's um, quite close to us. 
uh, when I live in the north. So really, really good training opportunity. <laughs> and how does this terrain compare to your home terrain? Uh, it's quite similar, actually. So it felt kind of homey, but of course a bit different, but could have been up north at my home. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, you maybe feels a little bit like a home advantage. And you just got one other runner on your team. Yes. Yeah. How are you hoping that she's going to do? Uh, she's my big sister. Um, I think she'll be really good. She's probably gonna try to enjoy it, even though it's really, really <laughs> tough. I hope it's fun for her. Yeah, exactly. And just having that surrounded by all the people, how um, easy or difficult it is? Do you think it's gonna be? Uh, it, do you think it is for you to kind of to keep your concentration with so many runners? Yeah, together? it's quite tough when everyone's around you and you have to keep your own head and not trust the others too much. I kind of did that mistake a bit in the beginning and made a mistake to the first control, but then I tried to keep it together again. <laughs> and as you, as you go through into kind of coming into your senior career and everything like that, are you hoping, do you think first leg might become a, a thing that you want to run more of? Um, I'm definitely out of my comfort zone because speed and um, physique isn't my most like best strength or yeah, so I'm in my comfort zone in the middle legs, but of course it's good to train every position. And uh, when we go to, um, you know, your individual uh, maybe aims for this year, um, what are you kind of looking at? What are you trying to focus on this year? Um, of course, the the youth, the junior champs, um, both um, AOC and JWOC are a big goal for me. And then Oringen and these big big races and um, also another um, opportunity like this in the Venla Relay so those are the main the main goals which um, which which country are you most looking forward to seeing um, and competing in yeah maybe um, we went to Romania already but yeah, yeah for both, a pre J walk yeah, camp yeah both, so. both Romania and Bulgaria the AOC and, and also we in the um um, or uh, terrains that are going to be cool. That's going to be amazing. Anyway, we've just seen, let's get back to a relay, I think, because we've just seen the uh, first runner through that it looks like Miri trying to earn them heading there into that first spot. You can see her going through and I look like we've got the second runner as well. Uh, so we'll say thank you very much to Evelina Yanaho for having a little chat to us. And we will head back then into the uh, terrain so it's like Nidalen's Itisa as well in there, mm -hmm. looking really strong. And I can tell you, we have seen some action here uh, on the time you have been uh, talking to the athletes. Look at this. Got to recap here of the GPS. And we have both Iktisa and we have IFK Göteborg and Westervik. Uh, going too far to the south and uh, struggling with this second control but also New Dalen did a mistake there mm. so we had uh, Vestervik I think in the lead even though we didn't get the punch there uh, in the graphics so that looks like loads of mistakes to control number two and for me if I was orienting in this type of terrain this is what I'd find the most hard is keeping the direction where it's fairly featureless you, you, your compass work has to be so strong I especially mean, for a, a, a kind of a longish middle-ish distance is, like, like that it is you could make it kind of uh, you could save it up a bit but if you try to head to the control directly which you often do because you I mean it's you don't want to be the chicken to, to, to not go straight to the control uh, but it's also a risk in the, especially when it comes to relays you you could be a bit more tactical in the, how to approach the control so uh, there would be a chance to save up a bit more and when we now have the situation that we don't have as many teams anymore together as we had on the first leg the risk that you miss the control is much bigger because mm -hmm. of course if you are in a group with 10 runners, 20 I see more than only two. So there's a bigger chance uh, that you see the control when you're in a bigger group. And uh, I think that's what we see here right now happening, that many of the teams that don't have 100% uh, good direction, they are in trouble.
Yeah, they really are. So Calvin Rasti through there as well. Two uh, teams from IFK Göteborg in that picture as well, already through at this point. Very, very strong start to all of their relays. And a bit more of a gap now. So some of these runners forming packs, but even in the kind of good visibility around this place. I mean, you just, this, this control is just hidden behind like a slightly bigger tree. Uh, Svetlana Mironova, I think, there for uh, Halden. Pulling up, I think, some places. Linné, uh, three. Doing better than uh, kind of Linné, one, who we saw kind of a miss on this northern part for both uh, Linné and Ludinger on the first leg. So a few more teams. The biggest climbers, I think we've got the likes of uh, Joanna Kelvik Löfven mm, from EFK Jutteberg climbing six places. And Asti Kardhut came from a little bit strange direction there. So we're shooting the control a little bit. We have many teams that have struggled with direction towards this second control. Uh, you can see all the runners coming here from this direction. They were off. We have the Rianan there. And is is this just hard because there's so few features in the on the map? Like it's not that long a control. I mean, I mean or does it? Is it more of a mental situation that you I, you I mean, think it looks hard and therefore you're kind of. They're, they're go wrong because it looks it looks hard. That makes I sense. Mean, weird logic. There are two different. There, there was a forking at the first control, and one control of the two was closer to the second control. If you had the one that was closer to the control, it's easier to keep direction because it is a short distance. If you have the longer one, uh, you have a longer distance without any features on the way. Definitely more difficult to get there. But at the same time, it's very open terrain. It's about using your compass. It's really not that difficult to get. Yeah, maybe you, ha you end up 20 meters to the left or to the right. If you are very focused and if you don't let the other runners around you kind of yeah, get into your head. Like that but, but is this an example of a control that's a bit easier when you're just by yourself? <laughs> and like when yeah, there's maybe, other people, it's just going to throw you off? In the end, it's, it's about doing your own race because you never know when the, when the forkings come. So you, do, you have to have a plan as you have in an individual race. You have to execute it as it is in, the, in an individual race. And you can see the other runners as a help, but it's, it's, the other runners are nothing to rely on. You can use them as a help or as a kind of a warning, but don't use them in kind of, don't try to use them and hope that they will make you faster. <laughs> so here is, they're live with the GPS tracking uh, at the moment. So uh, Vestavik, you can see, actually took quite a different route up towards control three. And then they kind of, they really spread towards the middle of that leg and then come back together mm -hmm. again. And you can see that uh, almost all of the teams there in top, they had a bit of struggles at the second control, but still uh, the gap is quite big uh, compared to the Kore, uh, Kalvandrasti, if Göteborg's second team, and then Halden, and then even more to this big group behind. So many, many of the runners, you can see they're approaching second control, Paimian Rasti. Uh, we have seen many teams that were just a little bit of direction. And at the position where Paimian Rasti is right now, you should be able to see this small yellow bit as she is doing right now, maybe. Uh, so then that should be no bigger problem. You can also see that Norska seem to have ended up at the wrong control there. Heading back towards control one. Oh, that's going to cost a lot of time. Yeah. Um, 
And even though Vestavik look like they're in the lead right now, had news through that uh, mm. they've been disqualified on the that's first right. leg. Um, so that's why, that's why they the didn't graphics. come through in the yeah. graphics in the lead. So uh, Vestavik are... Uh, not, I mean, pretty much the, the, the going from the best start to the worst start you can possibly have uh, on the start of this relay. So, um, not good news for them. So, we basically count them out now. Will the rest of the team, I mean, when, when your first leg runner disqualifies, does, does everybody else go out? What do you uh, do? You can, yeah, you can go on the restart, but they will definitely be out of the competition. Yeah. They will take them out. And then there's this restart at... I don't know when it is, <laughs> but it's uh, later on in the afternoon, and th it's kind oh, of so a mass even the, the, for the third leg runner won't be allowed to go out with the group because then because well, no, no, they because could then they affect can, the results. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So they will. I hope they will be picked out of the competition. I'm quite sure they will. Uh, and then, of I mean, that's the that's the th right thing to do because they can really affect the competition otherwise. So you have to take them out, and then you send the other runners uh, out later on. But it is such a horrible thing uh, <laughs> to notice when you stand there and read out and you kind of destroy it. I mean, everyone was traveling quite far up yeah. here. And uh, then yeah. your uh, yeah, the first leg runner miss punches. That's mm. it's not a nice thing to experience. Well, one of my stats that I prepared is the percentage of teams that missed punched you're, last you're year. You seem to be very happy I'm to be very, able to present this. I'm very that. happy to have the opportunity I'm to present this. I'm very happy that you prepared that. In the women's uh, relay last year, 28 out of 325 teams missed punched, which was a missed punch rate of 8.6%. There you Do go. Do you know on which leg they have most of the missed punches? No, I didn't no. go them that That's quite. Something for next, I, year, ne next <laughs> year If I get asked back, yeah. Um, I'll prepare that one for next year. Maybe unsurprisingly, the, um, the Tia Mila men's relay is the one where there's most highest percentage of missed mm. punches that's actually 24 percent of teams so a quarter of teams missed punched on the team Mila relay 74 out of 308 if that's not a stat i don't know what is <laughs> <laughs> so here we are with quarter uh one of the chasing groups or it's maybe a bit much to say that it's a group because we can just see her in the picture here. Don't know where the others are. There's we not really a group at all on the on the kind of start of this second leg. The the leaders really. And is second leg this one is the shortest one of all of them? Does that mean um, will the weakest runner get put on this one? Does it affect the fact that the next leg is the unforked uh, long leg? Uh, what might teams be thinking uh, in terms of like this, like or even where to put their weakest runner? Oh, it's it's very it, first of all, it's very hard to talk about the weakest runner. Mm. I think there are different different kind of strength you need for different kind of legs. Of course, you need the you usually you put your best runner on the last leg. Uh, we get some replay here. Maybe we can come back to that question. Mm. See that it's Yevko, not an easy one to answer. Yevko <laughs> Yatebori is heading out to this small path kind of avoiding all these stony bits. Going to the C control, looks really good. You can see uh, something that we saw Victoria Hester Björnstad talking about, with these clear tactics in order to save, uh, save up all the way, doing your own race. Uh, you can see that seems to be a team tactic. Yeah, and they are still then in the lead. This is Nidalen. This is Nidalen. 15 seconds behind. So Miritana Erdem on the second leg for Ifko Yetebere and Netherlands into second place. Iktisa. So maybe back to your question. I, I mm. think that the second one is actually quite an important leg because, as you mentioned before, you will have the unforked long leg after this. Uh, you don't want to be far behind on this leg. Of course, you put the strongest runner on the last leg. Usually, uh, second last leg is quite decisive uh, in order to get a good position for the last leg runner. Um, we were talking about the 
first leg, often you put someone that is not very experienced in that kind of terrain. Uh, second leg, I personally would maybe put the most experienced runner, but maybe n that maybe isn't the fastest one anymore. So it, it, you see many of um, kind of maybe earlier elite runners that have kind of retired and now are focusing on relays like that. That's a very good leg for runners like this because mm -hmm. you're, you avoid this nervousness from the first leg and it's but it's a very important one in order to get a good position towards the end of the relay or like the, the yeah the, the the third and fourth and fifth leg of course here's the second team from EF Core. still i think three or four um international runners uh you know yeah, international uh, team runners in in that first that first team but of this course i mean the very top teams they almost only have good international yeah, runners yeah. so they have good they have very very good runners all the way through there it's maybe more about the shape of the runners they are in uh what i was talking maybe a bit more talking about like the yeah the the teams from position 20 upwards uh so vestavik dropping down a little bit there i think it looks like they went to C4 instead of D4, maybe? Mm -hmm. um, oh, when we looked at the GPS it's tracking yes, earlier, so dropping the back. Getting back to the control here. Yeah, here she is. Matilda Eriksson. Yeah, I think dropping yeah, down a little bit there. There's another group coming here. Uh, it's yet to Mayana's second team behind. Which one is the first? It's Calvin Rusty. Yep. Yes, it is. So this is uh, Siri Silverloinen uh, in the two. And uh, Runa Fremstad. Sixth place. This is Halden, uh, Svetlana Miranova, the former Russian uh, elite. Poyan Tetti from Finland. I think this could be Krihansta. consumed as well. Don't know where we didn't get the other team in there. Maybe there was some struggle on the first leg as well. Yes, indeed. There was a miss punch also for Pan Krihansta on the first leg. Yeah, four teams uh, miss punching at the moment. And here we got the map, and this is, uh, you see, the place where Yevka Yotebori is at the moment, that's a skiing hill. It's uh, Control 8 and 9, where we have seen uh, Hanna Lundberg doing a small mistake, overshooting the E control. Yeah, Miritana Erdem, though, has F. Mm. Uh, but staying quite high on this, like, paved yeah, area here. She really wants to attack the control from above. Yeah, and you can maybe spot the, especially this bit of forest with the stones in, maybe to use as a little way, a little attack point of to get. Of course, you could also go the, the New Dalen way and then kind of get the green as a help towards the control. This is Entenui mm -hmm. and Yarla. And I think it is Umeå. Yeah, So into the top 16 here. We're so used to spotting national team kit yeah. as part of the World Cup. Uh, we I think think we're doing too bad in terms of spotting the um, the the club kits. Yeah, maybe dropping slightly. And I think this is Tamper and Pirinto. Looks like one of the ones making up the most room at the moment. Svetlana Miranova making up 
21 places for Halden. And very soon we will have the leading teams towards the second last control. Here we have Simona Abresold waiting for yeah. Miri Traneadum. And here they come, and you can see that New Dalen now is together with EF Göteborg. They did a small mistake there at the eighth control. Yeah, um, now maybe went to the wrong forking, I think, mm -hmm. initially, Miri Trana Erdem. But she's got a few uh, the, meters now ahead. But the thing is, it, it's more a mistake than going to the wrong forking because she had no other runners to follow. So she did initially the mistake by herself mm -hmm. and didn't follow to a wrong control. Yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. I think that's very good. So Miri Trana Erdem closely followed by Helena Carlson from New Darlings, last uh, year's winner. Of course, they will go with num bib number 501. But it's still, at least at the start of the race, still uh, EFK Yutabri are on the lead. So Simone Abersold, the Swiss runner, European champion in the middle distance. Looking, uh, just looking up at the big screen there to spot herself. Here's the incoming runner. And looking very good. And here she is all the way in. And very important, of course, uh, to send out Simona Abersold to this long third legs, uh, a bit more than 10 kilometers long. Uh, and of course, it's an advantage for her. Uh, she is a runner that definitely can uh, defend a small gap and maybe even uh, let it grow bigger. So very important part here for EFR Göteborg to hand over to this third leg, the long one, the long day in the women's relay. <laughs> Yeah, this long uh, unforked leg. Miri trying to earn him had, had a really great end to the course. She's done a job, kept the Court into the lead. A small mistake at the end, but not too bad for the Danish runner, who I know is really glad for the uh, the season to get back to the forest as opposed to a sprint. She's such a great uh, forest orienteer. So very good performance by Helena Carlson mm. for New Dollars Escort. Uh, Clay. Climbing yeah. from position five to position two, only eight seconds behind. Handing over to uh, Alice Hugoson. Strong running there. They've got, uh, I think, probably the they've got their best runners maybe on first, fourth, and fifth. And Margrethe Hauskenberg, who took the win basically for them last year, Turner Bergerudlia on the last leg. This is Igtisa as well. Mm, very strong performance so far by the Lithuanian team. Climbing up here and towards uh, third position. This is Hannah Sudol, and uh, they've really got quite a strong international uh, team here. Going to hand over to Hannah Wisniewska, the pole. They've also, she's got her uh, national teammate, Alexandra Hornick, on the final leg. Also, Elza Kuza on uh, the fourth leg. So maybe, really, they can be some kind of outsiders, dark horse team. Uh, now with these uh, last few runners to head uh, hand over towards. So uh, Hannah Sudol into third place, going to hand over to the Polish athlete Hannah Wisniewska. This is, uh, I think it's Westerweek, uh, but they are out of competition, as we mentioned before, Miss Punch on the first leg. Uh, otherwise, it would have been a really good start uh, for Westerweek uh, into this competition. Kind of a surprise. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, Miss Punch on the first leg. So we are waiting for the next teams uh, to come here. And I think it's Kore Kalevanderasti and IFK Göteborg second team. So let's see also, maybe we can see if they are picked out of the competition. Vestvik uh, coming into yeah, the arena here. She won't know, I think, that uh, the team's been uh, disqualified. So it might be a bit of a surprise there. She might be picked out. Looking up at the big screen here in this ice hockey arena. This is uh, Okakora. 
uh, handing over the next one. We're going to, I think Jonas is just going to see if she gets picked out so that they can't do that changeover. So that is uh, Agnes Nugod Kracht, who wish, would be handing over to Ivan Dongen. We've got OK Korda here as well. And yeah, she does get to hand over there. Interesting. We uh, thought they might have been pulled out. This is Mathilde Eriksson going to hand over to uh, Swiss runner Martina Ruch. Then the two uh, Risby sisters are on fourth and fifth. This is Calvin Lasty also climbing places here. Uh, EF Core 2 uh, climbing overall but was a little bit higher up, I think, uh, earlier on. Calvin Rasti, Silvi Silvanoinen going to hand over to Finnish uh, runner Ida Hapala. Mm, very happy second team for IFK Göteborg uh, in sixth position, 317 behind. More runners coming through. This is the uh, Gothenburg Mayana team. Second two. team. Yeah. yeah. Luna Fremstad. And uh, Pan Kristianstad. Uh, also, they, we got a mispunch in our system. So let's see if they will pick out the runners. Oh, maybe they'll have some protest uh, ongoing or something like that. Yeah. Also, Pan Kristianstad is uh, sent out on the third leg. You can really see there how they're holding up the team number mm. uh, for the other runner as well, just to kind of check that everything's Spit. okay. It looks like we've got a team from Linné there as well. And there's one Sunta, I think. This is uh, Halden Miranova here. Gonna, uh, and I think look, she's pilled up a lot of places here. The team from Halden going to hand over to Joe Shepherd, Hannah Way and Eleanor Ross still to come on team Halden. more mistakes on the controls heading down the slope I think as well a tricky tricky one uh, and Denry coming through it's still got 12 teams now within the five minutes but a lot of those teams gaining quite a lot of places here you haven't really seen many of those teams who drop down. The likes of Brennan will, of course, drop down. Helsing in Sinistat through dropping slightly down. This looks like a uh, Tampereen printer. It is indeed. So six minutes down for them. Some more mistakes, I think, on that. Uh, the fort control. Uh, the last forward control we just see when we're looking at some of the tracking here. Here's the Yara team. Normally they would have Carolyn Olsen in their team, but I think missing her this time. And um, from our position in the commentary box, I don't know whether it's coming through on commentary. The cheers that go up from the teams when they see their runners into the, the finish here is just... It really lifts the whole arena. You really just kind of pulls everybody together. Here's uh, Stora Tuna. Watch uh, out for them. Of course, we kind of talked a lot. They've they pulled up the 67 places on that leg into 20 uh, seconds, 21st, sorry, seven minutes down. Uh, after Ursa as well, we should keep an eye on them, mm -hmm. see if they're going to climb, because both of those teams have 
back stack 13. They put their and I mean, the gap the before was around five and a half, six minutes. And now it's, I mean, she only lost one minute. Mm -hmm. uh, and she was quite far behind. So it's, uh, that's a good job. But they have to, mm -hmm. ch they have to turn that over. I mean, it's, they are not allowed to lose any more time. Uh, now they have uh, Maria Ulaus on this uh, third leg, which is a very, very strong, strong runner. So runner, yeah. they might be able to win back a few seconds there. I don't want... Oh. So we got an information why they didn't pick out uh, the runners mm. Westerweek and Kristianstad. So uh, the organizers are out in the forest and checking some of the devices there in uh, order to make sure that it really is something. First uh, in for the second changeover. You went out in the lead and you stayed in the lead all the way, I think. Yeah, that was uh, nice to do. Uh, it was... Uh, Nice to give Simona a, a little gap. Uh, I think uh, that will be important now. So, did you have any problems with the uh, controls orienteering? Yeah, I uh, I uh, do a little mistake on the first leg already. I uh, oh, it's not a mistake, but just bad execution of my route choice. I I want to take the big path uh, all the way right, but I I go uh, a bit more in the terrain, and I I can see the teams behind me catching up a bit. So I try to stay calm after this. Uh, Missed the second one a bit um, and the second last, but otherwise it was a, a good race and I, I had expected to have some some mistakes, but I was um, I had a plan for how I want to to manage the mistakes and I think I minimized them, so I'm I'm happy with this. Yeah. Uh, how do you have how do, have you been uh, uh, in in the team talking to each other to keep this uh, the pressure you have under control or, or do you have any special tactique? Yeah, I think. Uh, We've been talking a lot about this uh, in the team that we, we don't have to do anything extra. Uh, it's a strong team all the way and especially the, the finish is uh, extremely strong. Uh, so I think the difference from uh, this year to, to last year is that we, we have, I think we have felt more calm and more uh, really believing that, okay, it's, it's nothing extra we have to do, just uh, average races and uh, it can uh, take us far. And a good start so far. Congratulations and good luck in the, the rest of the competition. Thank you very much. Thank you. of your interview on the on the screen um, for the for the world feed but we've got Miri trying to add them back uh, here in the picture fresh from that second leg um, you happy done your job you must be pretty happy with that yeah I'm, uh, I'm happy that I, I managed to to keep the lead and uh, give Simona a little a little gap and uh, put down in a, put her out in the first position I think she will uh, manage this well you were such a, a strong team. Was um, this second leg always the one you were going to do? Or when did you find out you were going to be running second leg? Uh, I knew I was going to do the second leg um, one and a half week ago. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Is that a lot of time or not very much time? What do you think? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a long time. Uh, I think we could have... A, uh, picked the team quite late uh, with so many uh, runners even in the second team that could uh, be in the first team I think we, we have a lot of confidence in the whole group so uh, but it's it's nice to know in advance uh, which leg you do <laughs> I mean even your, your second team's already there like in I think in the roundabout position five so I mean what does that say of the, the depth that you have in your club it's amazing yeah, it's, it's so cool it's really fun it was uh, it's the goal to have a uh, 
two two teams in the in the fighting in the top. So it's it's nice to to see that we are on the way at least. Yeah, you can see just the pictures of you um, running in here as well. Um, obviously, we saw a small mistake towards the end, getting back with the, the runner from New Netherlands, but you managed to managed to pull ahead towards the end, towards the end. Was that a bit nerve wracking? Yeah, and I, I think I I think the mistake started that I. Uh, I realized it was the controller passed on the way to first uh, first control. Oh, okay. So maybe I, I took it a bit uh, too easy on this one. Uh, like, okay, I'll, I'll take it from the, the angle 90 degrees mm. upside instead of uh, actively picking the root choice uh, and not going on the, the feeling I had from the first control. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, I was and a bit nervous there, <laughs> well, seeing well, Helena. Yes, but then you've got to somehow uh, battle those nerves. I mean, do you get nervous before before a run, especially on uh, representing your club like this? It's uh, it's very special. Yeah, of, of course. You. I think this year it has been more uh, excitement than uh, nervousness. Uh, I think uh, we're... In the team and individually, we, we've had the confidence to uh, to do the job and stay calm when those mistakes come, uh, no, not rushing it. We, we have the time to, to fix it. And a lot of people we've spoken to already said they really enjoyed the terrain. Yeah. Uh, it's just so beautiful, so uh, nice and runnable and quite similar, I think, as well to, to a lot of the trainings you've done in the, the Swedish League as well. Did you feel the same? Yeah, I, it's amazing terrain and it's so cool to be this north. Uh, <laughs> So so beautiful terrain and uh, I um, I enjoyed it a lot and enjoyed the last uh, few days of trainings a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it just looks amazing out there and you've got such a strong team to come. Will you? Will you now? Will you go away? Will you watch them? Will you wait nervously? What will you do for the next few hours? Uh, I think I'll start the, the cooling down, uh, going to our accommodation. It's a four minutes jog away with a full view to the starting point. So uh, <laughs> I'll go there and be be excited. <laughs> uh, a quick word to this. We can just look on the, the GPS screen now. We've got, uh, this is the kind of GPS replay for for the, the top, top couple of teams. We've got the two teams handing over quite close together. Looking at this kind of a leg, uh, what's your gut instinct? We'll first look at, at this leg. I think uh, Simona is making the, the right choice, having this uh, slight uh, right. Uh, I think the yeah the control is tricky in some some green area, but I uh, I think if you manage to to use the the vegetation boundaries well and really be distinct feature to feature, you can uh, you can find it well. Uh, but I think the challenging part about this terrain is those uh, shifts in detail and. And visibility. So, uh, but I think uh, Simona is uh, making the right choice, uh, seeking uh, this way. Yeah, looks like she's doing a really good one. All right, thank you so much, Mary. Congratulations! Thanks for chatting to us. We're going to get back to the race. Yeah, you're going to get back to your accommodation. Yeah. Have a shower. <laughs> Enjoy watching the rest of it. Thank you so much. As thank well you very for much for chatting to us. Enjoy the day. <laughs> thank you. We will. Okay, let us head back then towards the race. Okay, so Mary Thana Erdem uh, has got a lot of confidence in her team and so she deserves to have as well because that actually, it's a 30 second tail. Mm -hmm. These two runners here on the start of this leg have really, really managed to get a gap on the rest here. This is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, I mean, Mireille could take my job here as an expert. She explained uh, the way you should approach Control 3 perfectly. You can use, uh, you can see that they use this small hill there, where New Dalen is, uh, in order to get the right direction. Then you have to use the vegetation boundaries uh, because as she said it's quite tricky when you get close to the control the visibility gets lower of course here it's only a few meters you have to head into this green area but it's still i mean if, if you just miss it by a few meters you might not see it so you have to be careful uh, and especially in the situation efco is at the moment where kind of every second can be decisive uh, if New Darlin can spot Simona Abrisold or not, uh, it's important to get that control right. And you can also see the teams behind. Uh, quite a big group. Uh, I was talking about that before, but then we got the interview in between. So Vestervik still in the competition because uh, they, the organizers decided to double check the devices if there is the punch on them. So uh, they decided to leave them in the competition, not take them out uh, and first check if everything was okay or if it was a mistake by the device. But is this kind of what we'd expect for... Oh, here's a little mistake here. Mm -hmm. 
En ah, smooth mistake. Two, two mistakes, I would yeah. say. Uh, yeah. Oof, it's the who's going to find it first, I think. Uh, that's a good question. I mean, EFK was quite far away from the control there, actually. I'm not sure what she's doing now. She's at the border. I think New Dalen will spot the control now. That's interesting. I'm not sure if uh, Simona Abersold has a clear plan there, because otherwise she would try. I think the visibility is very, very low there, because New Dalen is so close to the control, but is not able to spot it. And it is a nervous situation, because I'm quite sure that New Dalen has an idea about where uh, Simon Abersold is. Uh, you don't want to lose the other runner if you're not 100% mm -hmm. sure, sure where she is. Then it's better to do the mistake together and then find the control together. The worst thing is if the other one gets to sp can spot the control mm. and you can cannot. And what I guess, I mean, this is total guess, but from the GPS tracking, it looks like... What it's it, maybe the maybe the vegetation boundary isn't very clear. No, what, the, what I think is you have these green stripes and it's going outside the vegetation boundary. Mm. So what they think is that they entered the vegetation boundary when they, they went just entered into the green these stripes. green stripes. Yeah. So then uh, they thought about the distance. I mean, they went in a few meters, then get back out of the green again. Mm. And I think that we will very soon see that they will see the control. I guess that New Darland will spot it very soon and then they are together because as I said, you don't want to leave the other one because you're so afraid <laughs> that the other one can get it and you cannot. Yeah, and maybe they kind of had confidence they, in it. They I think they got it, yeah. yeah. But they lost for sure a minute here. And yeah, uh, if we have not teams, more, I think. We have teams coming, but they have to find that control as well. So we are waiting here for Kalman Rasti, Kåre, Westervik and the second team of IFK Göteborg. Yeah, let's zoom back out and they've, or as, as I think we might expect on the this unforked leg, the long day leg as we call it, uh, lots of kind of groups, but fairly small cr groups with quite big gaps in between. Mm. Indeed, and the, I mean this is all about, I mean this long, it, it is unforked, so you know that if you are in a group, um, and if you if you don't lose it physically, then you will stay together with your group. But what we might see is that a few of these smaller groups will get together, and that um, I mean the most extreme one would be that uh, all of the top three kind of or top four groups would all get together. But of course, um, now we have such strong runners in the very top. So I, I think still at like max a they would gap, be like really, two yeah. groups getting yeah. together. Yeah, there's still like a two minute gap, I think, between the first group and the second group, um, even with that mistake. Uh, so, yeah, this is, at the moment, it doesn't look like that second group's gonna catch. If you, interesting route choice. Um, Pan Aarhus and Mora, both uh, taking the climb actually, but staying on these wide tracks. Uh, I did a little bit of geeking and found that those are a lot of the, the cross-country skiing tracks that were mm. around there. But let's just double-check this uh, these two runners. It's like N Nidalen in the lead here. Mm. Pretty good direction, though, uh, towards control number four. And do these two runners, like, settle? I mean, it's a long day. Do you kind of settle into... Oh, right, well, we're just going to see a lot of each other. Or do they try and make a gap? I think in the beginning, my guess would have been that Simona will try to do her own race. She had kind of a small gap, so mm. she had the opportunity. Now, when she did a mistake, um, I'm not sure if she will be as attacking as before, because she might, at least not for the for this shorter controls, technical ones. Uh, if there's a longer route coming where it can be a bit more attacky physically, I think she will try to do something. But otherwise, uh, it's good to have four so eyes to Team spot leader stuff. for New Dalen, uh, who is in the front of the Dom Relay, ladies relay. Uh, is it going according to your plans? Definitely according to the plans, both uh, 
Anna and Helena have delivered very good legs on the first two ones and uh, Alice was very tempted to do a very good long leg now. And then we have Anna Grete and uh, Tone left on the last two. So we hopefully we'll give uh, IFK Göteborg a fight all, all the way to the finish line. Uh, IFK Göteborg is maybe the most uh, hard uh, favorite here, but New Dalen you won yesterday, uh, last year, I'd say. So uh, how have you been, uh, your thoughts this year? We have been quite optimistic, there have been not so much talk about our team this year, but uh, we know our, our ladies have uh, prepared very, very well and uh, we have been here since Wednesday, prepared, learn a little bit about the terrain. Not uh, at Felimer as, as we have last year, but uh, with, with the experience we have in the, within the team, we have uh, been very, very optimistic and we have a good start of the day where the yacht theme was number three, that was a very good uh, performance by day, so we continue on that level. Okay, what do you think will be the key to to win this relay? We can see on the tracking that they are, are making small mistakes, so it's you need to be focused, you need to use the, take, take advantage of the good side and really follow the, the compass direction, so, so you don't are troubling and do parallel er errors which are very easy in this type of terrain. And these are skills that the New Dalen runners have? Naturally we have that, and, uh, but then things can happen, so we, uh, we need really to deliver and be focused all the way to the finish line. Okay, thank you and good luck. Thank you. Okay, mm -hmm. let's have another look. This is the replay then, I think, of, yep, uh, of the leading two teams then at control number three. This is uh, probably one of the most, more, maybe more significant misses in terms of time loss that we've seen. Um, certainly on the broadcast, we're not following some of the, the, run, the, the runners maybe having more difficulties further down. I mean, it's, Although it's, that was maybe then when they did eventually get it. Yeah, yes, they okay. got it. And uh, it's... It, yeah, you can see it's claimed to be live, but it's definitely a it's replay. It's definitely not live. Uh, this is a few mm -hmm. minutes old. Uh, but what we can tell you is that EFK Göteborg, the second team, did a mistake at the third control. Uh, so the other teams, Kalman Rasti and Kore, were able to get away from the team. But as you just saw there... Mm. Uh, there was a mistake from the other teams again at Control 4. Could get a, a small glimpse there. Yeah, lots of small misses. Okay, and now we can have a look at then at this replay. So see the replay here, the mistake by the second team of EFK Göteborg. I'm not sure, did mm. she just miss to punch it maybe? Uh, no, maybe slightly to the east. Mm -hmm. And then you can see that and they did a mistake okay. there. Can yes. Rasti and Kore at the fourth control again. You can see direction. they found that boulder. It's about the right yeah. distance from the controls. They got the distance right, but not the direction. And then they were able to relocate with this green area just behind the control. But it gave uh, EFK Göteborg the possibility to get back into this group again. And of course, uh, that's a very good thing for the two leading teams, Nydalen and IFK Göteborg. Because now so the gap is about the same as mm. it was before the mistake at Control 3. So this looks maybe like kind of potentially these these kind of second and third groups could join together. I, would um, I mean, there's a quite a good possibility for that. Visibility in this part is quite okay. Uh, so they might spot them very soon, and once they spot them, it's almost impossible to keep that gap open. So if you have just joined us, we saw um, Hannah Lundberg from Brennan take a great uh, lead initially on leg one, turned on the speed at the end, but a slight mistake put uh, Eve Court into the lead after leg one. They were handing over to leg two, some misses towards the start, but EF Core again, very strong with uh, Mary Turner Erdem, Netherlands for great orienteering again towards the end of the course where it got tricky. We saw the likes of Halden catching up as well, but that's ultimately why we're left with those two teams in the lead with a big gap keeping high speed in the forest, even though um, none of the teams have been clean. I think everyone's going to be slightly frustrated with their runs because they're just making very, very small misses in the terrain. 
And now it looks like that second and third chasing group are maybe merging together as we've got the likes of Stora Tuna on the chase there. Uh, you can see them in yellow. We've got After Ursa as well on the chase, maybe with some of their better runners starting later. They're going to be trying to work their way back up through the pack. So that is the kind of the sit rep for where we are now. Interestingly, those leaders, you can see in the middle of that leg, taking very different ways, um, kind of through the green section in the middle, maybe trying to tick off different uh, features rather than just going completely straight through the fairly featureless uh, terrain. But what that does tell us, I think, is that those two runners really are doing their own races. And um, maybe if we get to chat to a couple of them later, we can ask them a little bit about... Um, their tactic on this long day leg. This is the unfought leg. It's um, over 10 kilometers uh, of racing, 10.2 kilometers. An estimated uh, time on this leg is 68 minutes. Although to be honest, they're all running way quicker than the organizers think they're they're, they are. So um, we look like we're going to be um, maybe slightly ahead of uh, the schedule that they have certainly put together. Mm, and I think we are waiting at control six now, and we are waiting for the two top teams, IFK Göteborg and New Dalen. Uh, Simona Abersold for IFK Göteborg, and Alice Hugosson for New Dalen. So here they come, I think, and it is uh, blue and white. It is IFK Göteborg first. There is Nydalen. Can't spot her yet. Mm. Let's... Yeah, I think Ooh. I can hear her. Here ah. it is. Here she is. Uh, maybe just about too much in order to not see her mm. around the corner there. Yeah, I wonder if we can almost stick on this spot, see if we can see Simona Abersold in the distance. It looks, this bit may be slightly denser, more uh, trees with lower branches. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be hard. You have quite many features around, which makes it hard uh, to see many meters in front of you. Maybe it will be a bit different again later on in the course. Maybe she will get the chance to see like 15, 20 seconds ahead and then she will spot her again. But I mean, the other question is if she will be able to just close the gap again physically, because of course, um, Simona Abersold is quite a strong runner <laughs> to meet out there on the third leg. And and that strength is actually going to really show when we get towards the end of the leg, mm. right? Well, I mean, uh, physically, the differences in the beginning of a course, they're not very big. Uh, I mean, every one of us has experienced that when you do some kind of training or interval or race, uh, it's quite okay to, to keep up and overpace for a few minutes, <laughs> yeah. but it will get tougher and tougher. Uh, tougher the longer the race is ongoing so it's yeah let's wait and see but There's it still looks quite good a lot of the course left but to go. i mean we, we have seen that she had a good speed they were splitting up as you mentioned before mm. both of them are doing the job both mm. of them are mm. into the map reading so there's no... I'm not afraid that she will just lose it totally. You can also see the different route choice there by Tamperempirinto and Stura Tuna. Surely that's too extreme. It is quite extreme, especially if you see how good the runnability is. And I mean, this would be an option for night orienteering, but... There's very little night orienteering this afternoon. <laughs> yeah, the, tonight. There's, uh, I'm not sure it's going to completely get dark this far north. It is the northernmost uh, Tiamila ever. Uh, I think sunset something like 10 p.m. tonight and sunrise not very long after 2 a.m. So, uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to get properly dark. But I don't think they will be out there still. Well, these, time, these, no. lot, these lot definitely <laughs> won't be out there. That will be a very long day. That would be a, a pretty abysmal of them to have made it to uh, to the darkness if they were still to be out there at that point. Uh, so that second and third group kind of mostly coming together, yeah. apart from Halden, Joe Shepherd on that third leg, just kind of doing her own thing, maybe wanting to. The other's kind of sticking just lower, the lower part of the slope. Maybe she's going to want to take the higher ground and, and nip into yeah. the control like that. But it's a bit unnecessary because the, the control is much easier if you attack it from above. Uh, so it's, uh, I don't know. You don't need to do that. She will, be, she will climb a few more meters, but she won't lose a lot of time by doing that uh, either. So Iktisa into third position. They're not very any GPS device. 
Mm. So they are in between uh, all on their own here. Three minutes behind the two leading teams. And we are waiting for the big group. We are waiting for Kalevan Rasti, IFK Göteborg, second team, Kore NTNUI. And uh, Sunto Veskula, I think it is. But that was uh, Hanna Wisniewska uh, through into third place. Here's the next runner. That should be Kalavandrasti. It yes, is. it did. EF Core 2. Yes, indeed. And soon, soon is tired. We have as well. Marlowe's. Last week here in Kandomian. Kinaru, Kukukore, and Kenui. And. So, so what is that a group of seven there? I think yes, minus yeah. the first three. So you have Kaur, uh, Ndalan, then Utisa, and then a whole group of seven running together. So we haven't quite got all of their GPS tracks uh, when we look at everything there. But Martina Ruch, Anna Drukorn in there, Teresa Yanashikova, Evely Karsaku, Ivan Dongen, um, quality national uh, team runners in there as well. I think we had uh, Evely Kasiku in the group as well. The one not on the graphics. Yeah, Helsing and Sinistriat disqualified on the second leg, but obviously they've been allowed to continue. I think, I'm not sure whether it was on the second leg or the I first mean, leg. I think no, it was on the second they, leg. They, they didn't have the chance to take them off, So, but I guess it's the same situation as yeah. for the other teams. Here's Halden and Linné. Oh, so there is like a little group there uh, with the three of them. It looked like maybe uh, Joe Shepard from Halden was running by herself, but not to be. Oh, yeah, Tati. Kirsi Nurmi out there all on her own. A little bit between the teams here. 20 seconds up to the third team of Linnea. And no team just behind. And obviously this uh, third leg, a very, very different shape to the first two, which seem to be closely forked. Um, you know, for someone like me, I've not, not done a um, two meter before. How, and we can't really necessarily comment on this one because we haven't seen all the legs yet. How do these relays tend to be planned? Do they tend to use different shapes, different parts of the terrain for different legs? Yeah, of course. I mean, you, what you do is, uh, like in this relay here, when you have uh, an unforked long leg in the middle, then you try to fork the first leg and the second leg to each other. Mm -hmm. uh, and because you do that, they have to be quite similar in shape, of course. Otherwise, you won't meet those forking controls. Uh, and what you do then, because you don't want the runners to be able to leave too much information to the runners coming, you try to plan the courses in a way that different uh, yeah, legs go into different areas so you can't really say for sure uh, in which parts of the forest uh, everyone will be running. Then we got a few other teams. Tampere Pyrinte, first team. UFK Umeå and uh, Göteborg Majorna, second team. Uh, Elena Gempela on that one. Paolo Gross so from Stura Mora. There. Yeah, uh, but she lost time. I remember it was about seven minutes at the changeover. Mm. Now it's eight minutes here, and we also know that uh, the leading teams they were not uh, free from mistakes either. 
but it does look like Storantuna is still climbing places, climbed two places, but not as many as uh, Mora uh, Palo Gross climbing 12 places there so far. Yekua and uh, Yerla. That's the card hood. Uh, 24 teams, 8 minutes and 40 seconds. And uh, kind of s same question as before about the, the kind of difference in the, the shape of the courses and things, but how does it tend to compare between um, the women's relay here for Team Mila and, and the 10 person relay overnight? Do they try and I be creative and, and use different shapes or different areas of the terrain? Yeah, usually they do. Um, even though, I mean, you can do it in. in different ways. Now you can see that you see different parts of mm. the GPS. Maybe we'll show the, uh, uh, like the blocked parts now in the men's relay. Mm. Um, but it, it's basically enough to just plan the course in another way because most of the runners have seen the map, like the base map mm -hmm. before. So mm. that doesn't really matter. It's more about not knowing in which area you will go as a runner, uh, I guess. You see here the Sturatuna and Tampurin on this uh, quite far round route choice. Halden, as we were talking about before, uh, uh, no, it's not 100% necessary because it's almost easier to attack the control from below. You have this two small paths, then you have this uh, vegetation boundary that helps you towards the control. Uh, Sturatuna with a mistake there at control 6 after this quite extreme route choice as well. We can also spot in the top that IFK Göteborg was able to get away from Nydalen. Uh, the gap uh, about 45 seconds I would say, almost a minute now. And you can see it's almost uh, uh, only due to the fact that she was just going straight mm. uh, and not uh, giving away any distance there. So you can see 53 seconds. Uh, if we want to trust the GPS devices. And what they were like, 20 seconds gap, maybe control number seven? Mm, or I mean, it was, it was just control about, six, wasn't it, that we saw them? It was just them. about the distance that she couldn't spot as an have result. This who goes on. I can also see at control seven, I think that Iko Huope is a bit in danger there, heading up the hill early. Okay, we have Here she is. <laughs> towards control eight, the long leg. And Pansy I guess here. she will be very relieved just to be kind of running by herself. Mm, um, definitely, it's if you are such a strong runner as she is, I mean, she has a lot of confidence. If she won uh, medals at championships, many medals, and now she's facing runners on this third leg that are less experienced internationally, she knows that she should be able to kind of get away here mm. and it's a big chance for Yevko Jotebori to do so. So it's for her definitely, it's a good feedback that she kind of just was able to push away mm. on this long leg and now she can try to do her own race, has the confidence again after the small mistake in the beginning that she can go on on herself and uh, still be fast and maybe yeah, send out the fourth leg runner then with a gap. Yeah, you see she's running along this track here and... Um, but you can also see that, I mean, Nydal and she's... Uh, Alisa Hugoson, she's not doing she's it... She's very stable. Yeah, she is. I mean, yeah. she's not doing a bad job. It's just that she's facing one of the world's <laughs> best orient here. So yeah. it's she's actually doing a great job. I mean, there's no mistake at this control. Uh, okay, she, she could have tried to kind of be a bit closer to the red line, but I, I doubt that she could spot um, Simona Abrisold in, in front of her, and then, of course, she goes her own way, and that leads to small differences in, in the execution of the leg. So, just crashing through the terrain here, you can kind of see that the hill mm. that she's looking for. Yeah, it shouldn't be a too big problem. No. You named it, you should spot this hill. Uh, and I mean all around the contours are quite clean and clear and then you should s kind of see this when it gets more curvy in, in the contours and 
the yeah, terrain. Yeah, with a little bit more detail, I think yeah. you can really spot the changes from when it goes just kind of one profile on the slope. It's just a slope to some detail in the slope. So we watch out then for uh, Alice Hugerson from New Darlings then on her way uh, there as well. But Simona Absold lives in Gothenburg. Correct me if I'm wrong for the most... I mean, to be honest, she, she looks like she's on training. She's like on training camp all the time. Because Casper like. Foster lives in Gothenburg. Oh, and then okay. It's a bit back and forth for her. Uh, I don't think she's there all the time. Uh, but of course, I mean, it. But did it she transfer a couple of seasons ago uh, to EFK? Yeah, from uh, Tampere and Pirinto. Changed to EFK. Uh, and of course, <laughs> that was a very good transfer for. Yeah, very uh, good transfer. Uh, for them. Club. But here we have Alice Hugason. It's very solid orienteering. Mm. But still, I mean, the gap. If. There won't be any mistakes. Basically, when I episode, I expect the gap to grow bigger from here, which will make it very, very hard for New Darland to get back into this competition. But what is her job here? I mean, it's just kind of keep as she has been. I mean, she is, she is doing a good job. She is, we haven't seen any bigger mistakes when she was alone now. Of course, we had this situation at the third control, but that could also be back there. It was that she, it was on the edge to lose Simona Abersold in front of her. So she might have just followed her a bit too much, which I think is quite okay in that situation <laughs> because you know it's unforked. Uh, then you can rely on someone's back when you're not 100% sure. Um, but now, I mean, she has to do her own job, and as, as long as she's not doing any mistakes, then she does her job well. Yeah. Uh, it's just that she is, as I named before, she's facing one of the world's best orienteers, and that's by definition quite a hard, <laughs> hard job <laughs> yeah. to do. It's not an easy job. Yeah. Rather have me, you know, to be honest. Um, but yeah, you get a sense, a little bit of a sense then of this uh, group here. But maybe let's turn our attention to that this chase group then. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's more runners in this group than we've got GPS tracking. I think there's maybe, there's at least seven uh, in this group. And of course, we have uh, Igtisa as well. Um, Helsing in Sun is there yet. Westerweek. I think we have there without the tracking. Uh, so there are, I think, three more teams compared to the GPS tracking. And my guess is that they are basically together as a group and the gaps you see on the GPS is due to the, like, the runners in between. But maybe we'll see it in the picture, maybe not, because we, I think it was only a running cam, was it, at Control uh, 9? Yeah, I think so. I don't think we've mm. got a stationary camera Small here. Small mistake, I think, by Calavandrasti Ooh. at the control there. Hang on. I think I'll keep an eye on the GPS. Calavandrasti in the red. Or not yeah, in the red I think anymore. Because now they like you can see that they're all grouped together again. And then you can see here Alice Hugerson for New Darlings going uh, more on the track here. Maybe going to cut up uh, around this hill. And there's quite a few tracks on this area. Just going to make it the running slightly, slightly easier. She just kind of cuts through there and we'll head on the next track. Uh, there we go. Down this hill again. A fair amount of climb on these courses. I mean, but, but but what everyone is saying. I mean, the forest is just gorgeous. It's a it's a great day. I mean, there's there's nothing better you can do today, right, than go and running for your club here at, at Tiamila. I mean, on my list of things to do for today that anyone could possibly do for today. It comes pretty high up. Mm, I mean, look around. It's really it's really enjoyable terrain. Uh, and we are talking about that a lot in, in World Cup competitions. Yeah. The enjoyable terrain often isn't the most difficult one, but here it's... You have to be so careful with these changes in speed. Uh, mm. You see control 10, you're heading down a slope, attacking control from above is 
quite difficult mm. anyway. Here you don't get too many features, but just behind the control we have an open area. But you have to be careful with these changes, Miri Tranier mm. named it. Mm -hmm. It's the it's the changes that make it difficult. It's not the it's not really yeah, the maybe terrain each bit itself. in and of itself. Yeah. It's, you know, because it's either fairly flat and not many features, you've got to use that compass, but then you've got to switch through to there actually being quite a lot of contours and everything as well. Okay, so this kind of on the track just towards the south of control number 10. I wonder if we're trying to wait for the next uh, runner We can through wait here. quite a bit if we wait for Yeah, maybe Iktisa. Well, no, we've got Iktisa that we um, don't have on the tracking. So we know. I think there's a bigger gap. We get, uh, as you can see, kind of from the little uh, timing bar, we get the next runner through. We get a next time check quite soon. Our next split time, was, which is at 7.7 .7 kilometers around this 10.2 kilometer I think it's course. At control 11, maybe. Yeah, I think it probably is. So there you have it, and New Darlin approaching this 10th control. Doesn't seem to cause any problems. You can see the tail still 30 seconds, so the gap, yeah, around a minute. You can also see that we have uh, this big group there at con after control 9, all gathered together. And then we have many runners uh, heading towards control 8 on this path with uh, quite some gaps in between, but. Uh, as we mentioned before, we don't really know about the runners with or without GPS devices. That's true. I mean, your your orienteering ability, how much you're going to back yourself, your physical shape, all going to influence um, whether whether going straight like Simone Abersold or whether going on the tracks to so this long controls number eight is actually going to have been the best option for you, I think. Mm. I think it's yeah. I mean, looking to the terrain, I think it's it's about keeping quite close to the red line. Um, if but you go a, a bit to the left or right, to the red line. So yeah, it's, I it's, mean, does that say it's it, it looks okay, but actually is quite physically sapping? No, I You've think got that hill climb though. There, it's mostly about putting in some safety in orienteering. Mm. That if you go too much to the right and head to this path, you're hundred percent sure where yeah. you're gonna come out. Um, if you go straight, it's always a a bit tricky, but if you look at control eight, I mean, there are so many paths just before the control. It's not a control we are gonna miss. <laughs> so it's um, in this case here. I and then you have the power line and everything. So it, in this case here, I would really recommend to just stay as close as possible to the red line. Okay, so I think this is. We are probably at control 11, just as a guess. We are definitely at control. We're 11. definitely at control 11. Oh, there, there, it, there is. it is. We found it. It's there. Um, but I think if, sh if um, the runners are going to approach from the left of the picture, which mm -hmm. is what we're expecting, then it again, it's just sneaky and hidden exactly as you'd want. You know, it's hidden exactly as we would expect from tough planning. You've got to bring proper, proper good planning, just hidden the other side of the feature, um, which is going to be very tricky. But of course, I mean, all of these top runners, they know, they know the course setters aren't going to make it easy for them. I, you know, I'd be quite disappointed if they made it easy. I mean, you never expect mm. the control to be the, on the, the, the way you're looking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the side you're facing. We are waiting now for Simona Abersold. As he said, we expect her to come from the left into the picture. Uh, it looks as if she went quite straight towards this one. I have to be a bit careful in order to get the right height into the control. Yeah, there's a whole load of kind of complex detail here. The slope orienteering means it's tough to get exactly the right height. Maybe there's a few little parallel features as well. But here, here, we she go. Comes. here she comes. No problems whatsoever. Towards control 11, it looks really good also on the GPS. And of course, here's a runner who won't bat an eyelid at, you know, there being cameras in the terrain and everything like that. Very used to, you know, knowing that they can be sometimes a little bit away from the control, looking at the control. But this is, I think, exactly what we'd expect from Simona Rappersold. 
Yeah, I mean, she she seems to be very calm. Um, I don't think she is afraid of this open terrain. Uh, as long as the visibility is good, it seems that she is very almost running on the rails. It's it's so it, it looks so good. I think it would need some change in vegetation in order to lower visibility. And here you can this see a very picture. classic situation for a long Nobody unforked leg. There's one runner mm -hmm. that has been responsible to read the map and everyone else was following. And then you lose control and everyone is pretending to read the map <laughs> as well. <laughs> Believe me, I've been there and I've been the one pretending. <laughs> But this is not, that's not the control they were looking for. There we go. Yeah. There you can see, see you can see they were all checking their control codes there, can't you? And but I mean, now, uh, I've been talking about this control before. You get down there, you have to have the right direction. And behind the control, you see that small hill with yellow bit on it. Uh, something you spot, you can see it from here even. So it's, uh, mm. it's not the most difficult control. But if you're in this group and you kind of think that everyone else is going to do the job, then yeah, if, so, if everyone start, uh, stops to read the map at the same time, then in the end, no one is doing the job. So it looks like Igtis are being caught by this group. So there's probably a group of maybe maybe 10 or so runners from here. Uh, here is Alice Hugerson in second place then for Nidalens. And we want to see now what the time gap has been. Obviously, they were together, or maybe 20 seconds apart, I'd say. Now it's about two minutes, I think, or mm -hmm. just over, or just under the two minutes then for um, between the first and second teams. We can uh, also say that it was, it was just growing by a minute from like control, let's say, halfway to control 10 towards control 11. So definitely the speed, this kind of tricky orienteering for Simona Abrisol is much, much better. So, I mean, these pictures just really give you a sense of what it is like uh, trying to keep calm amidst all these kind of 10 or so runners who are all, uh, you know, just trying to keep accurate orienteering. And, and it, it's I wonder if they're actually going slower because they're in a group. One hesitates and they all hesitate. So, what I can read out here is that quite many of the runners trust uh, Evely Kasiko in the lead. Uh, she seems to be the leader of this group. She seems to do the job. And you can see that no one is really... I mean, they're lining up beside each other, which is a indicator that the speed isn't very, very high. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they would line up behind each other. And then it's n no one ever gets up to Kasiku at this point. So it's definitely she that's in the driver's seat. And there is some... Uh, maybe, uh, maybe, I don't know how it is in, on day orienteering, but in night orienteering, unforked leg, mm -hmm. long, long night, you have this unwritten rule that is, if there's someone that clear in the driver's seat, you let this person do the job. But mm -hmm. your job is to actually be active behind and check the map. And you could see that no one was doing that here because that was exactly the thing. When the leader, now we don't know if it really was Kasik or not, when the one in front stops, someone, the second one, the third one, the fourth mm. one, has to step in and mm. take over. So mm. that's the rule, the unwritten rule. But <laughs> here it seems that they were kind of trusting her and not doing the job, the yeah. ones behind. But they were all very so kind of surprised when they got and you can see, I mean, you can one. see Janosikova kind of taking a few steps here, just walking. Mm. So this, the speed definitely isn't too high. And we have seen Kasiko in the lead here for minutes now. I mean, this group could... I mean, what do they have to do differently then to work together no, to, to catch it? Can, is it possible for them to work together to try and catch up the leaders? I mean, what they have to do differently is um, that the ones behind have to be ready when the leader gets un unsecure. Or, uh, in this case here, I think the speed isn't... 
I mean, we see Janusz Ikawa take a few steps and just walking every now and then. So that indicates that the speed isn't very, very high. So in order to be really fast, you have to have some a few changes. You have to have someone challenging the leader, but at the same time, yeah, it's it's always a hard thing. If in, if they would like to be really really fast, they would ha need two or three runners active as uh, Kasuku in this situation here. The thing is, we know Kasuku. So yeah, we can see just then, like the others have got to take over where she kind of hesitates at that kind of point and still be be on it. The runner from uh, Ente Nui really kind of pushing ahead in order to to get that control. But it wasn't very distinct. So she she was taking the lead, but it just felt that she didn't have any other option. Yeah. Uh, she had, I mean, I, I won't say that she has no idea where she is because she, they, they know that they're on the right way, but I don't think that they have like 100% control and they have not mm. been able to read ahead uh, mm. in order to be proactive and just say, okay, now it's this feature coming, now it's this feature coming, we have to read this one and then be really quick. So they would need a few more runners that are more proactive in the orienteering. So here we go, this whole group, a group of about was that seven runners there, oh, with a couple who've been disqualified, including mm -hmm. Everly Kasaku, mm -hmm. um, disqualified. Have we heard any more update from the officials about checking those? I um, mean, we, ha we have kind of heard that they are checking the device, yeah, but no. Yeah. I'm not sure we've heard anything definitive about whether they have been disqualified or not. We'll try and bring that confirmation. Um, either way, uh, when we get it, of course, because that's really, really crucial because there are more than nine teams we've seen go through through this picture. One of those is uh, Helsinki and Sinistiats, um, Everly Kasaku really being kind of uh, in control, I think, or, or, or certainly being being maybe being forced into that leading position um, in that like big, big group with many, many top runners just kind of heading I mean, towards I mean, it, that it shows part. you here how decisive is the it can be uh, if you take someone out of the competition or not because mm. definitely Kasiku in quite a big bit we have seen now was an, uh, the most active runner here if you would have taken her away uh, then someone else would mm. have needed to step in and it could have gone totally different so yeah. it's it is important to do that but I can understand that of you want to be really, really sure that you miss punched before you take someone out of the competition. Oh yeah, it's going to completely change everything. Absolutely. So we've got, um, I think, looking towards the front of this race, Simone Abasold is making even more ground. I think on Nidalen. Mm, yeah, it, it looks so. I mean, it's not so much left of the course. You have this control twelve, and then it's only three controls left. So it's. But, I mean, you can see the gap has been growing now. It's up to two and a half minutes, maybe. Mm. And uh, that's, that's quite a lot. Yeah, we've got some, maybe some tricky uh, downhill controls as well. But uh, the Swiss runner will be very, very used to that. But we're back then in terrain. This is the uh, 11th control. We've got another group on their way with some of the top teams. We'll try and get a sense of whether they are catching the... M oh, I don't know. But if you look at the mm, time back, no, it's going to be like 10 minutes by the time. And just stopping there. Is that 5-1? I think it's... Uh, on an here. Yeah. I oh, know. Five on five. This is Kirsty Nurmi, I think. Uh, uh, sorry, yeah, Kirsty Nurmi. Of course, Anna Nari is running for Lachten Sunistayat, not for Poyan Tetti. Punching there all alone. Mm. It's, uh, I think, one to ten thousand scale that all of these runners have got. So, um, on a course as long as this normally it'd be 115 um but maybe those with declining eyesight will be very happy yeah exactly no it's to, it's you to especially with this detail i mean <laughs> trying to read that 150 no no you of definitely course you need a good magnifier right you want to get everyone involved here so you can't uh, disqualify the ones uh, maybe the older runners just by having a 1 to fifteen thousand map i think that's i mean that's standard in all of these big relays 
Here we have this big group, Espon, Sunta, Mura, I think I've seen there, uh, Sturatuna. Uh, and you can see is for Sturatuna the gap now. Even with Tuve on the last leg, I think this will be very important, uh, ver very difficult. This is Alf de Usa. Kalina Vinagorda. Yeah. But maybe, maybe she's a little bit closer to the likes of Storatuna earlier on. And actually, when you see some of these runners through, maybe just seeing how much they're looking at rounds, or it, it kind of puts into perspective the quality of the athletes right at the start of the field, I think. Yeah, you could see some differences, how they approach the control and also how they leave the control. Uh, talking about uh, seeing differences, now we have Simona Abersol going into the slope where we've seen many of the mistakes on the second leg. Let's see if how she will tackle it. So you can see a few of the runners from earlier legs here as well. Going a bit with stop and go, reading the map very carefully here. And you know she's I a third leg runner. Will she get some? Have got some feedback maybe from the other runners about? Maybe, but I don't this tricky think area. that you will hand over such specific feedback about the one specific specific control like mm. this one because you have no idea if. It's so hard to explain and you don't know if they even have this control as well. You can see that she definitely stopped there for a while. Is this part of... Here we go. This looks like the control. There we go on that boulder. Yes, it is. Um, you know, is that part of her team tactics though? As part of... Well, she knows she's got a big gap. She's got to be pretty confident that she was quite close to that control where she made a mistake. She'd have to be really unlucky if her someone was going to overtake her. She puts some nice safety seconds in to get it. I think right. some, something that we could feel when you see the pictures and also when we hear what they are saying after the run is that they have a clear tactic how they behave mm. once they are out in troubles. It's a bit... Uh, actually, she was a bit lacking this behavior at control three because it seemed uh, not that structured. But... At the same time, it might be quite green and quite tough to see, but mm, there it wasn't perfect. But otherwise, you could see, you can see really that as soon as they are not 100% sure, they stop, they start to relocate, they're looking around, they know that they're close, mm. and then they go from there and they don't get nervous and just run around and try hope for the best. So Simone Abersold running her own race to break away. She started this leg very, very close to Nadal and made the two of them kind of made some mistakes. But I mean, such as her class, she was just able to kind of pull away from some of the others. And of course, she's going to hand over to Ellen Monson, who is waiting there, ready for her teammate. Of mm -hmm. course, she's looking over her shoulder. <laughs> you can see that she's not sure at all if she's in the lead or where mm -hmm. the others are. Of course, how should she know? Uh, no. And this is a good position you see quite far. So, yeah, shows that she's not 100% sure about her speed. No, uh, New Darlin, small Ooh, mistake here at control 12. Managed to, you know, managed to regain control, maybe heading to where the slope got a bit steeper. And the I mean, she was very close to the control when she left the path. No. Uh, she knew that she can't she go can't much further. No, absolutely not. So, uh, you've got to vote with uh, Simona Abersold on the third leg. This is the long day leg. It was completely unforked. But she's managed to make a huge gap now. I think not just a second place, but more importantly, back to the rest of the field where we've got some strong challenges on the last couple of legs. Amazing running here from Simona Abersold, the Swiss runner. Uh, she has done exactly her job. I mean, I think the team selectors are going to think, 
that we did a good job of putting such a, a strong runner here on the third leg able to get a gap which is so hard to do on this um unforked leg and she's done an amazing job i don't know whether she's gonna know that there she, she does now anyway there's a big smile and relief then for probably the the favorite team here in this women's relay simona abasold has done her job for EFK, Göteborg, IFK, Gothenburg, and gonna hand over to Aileen Monson, who has got a game face on here. She now knows what is expected of her. Simona abbasol has got to find her map. Uh, is it the right one? Five, leg yeah, 506, is. yeah, leg four, there we go. And handed over in the lead, two hours and 24 minutes it is the total time for the team maintaining that leading position and now we see the second seconds tick by here is a second place team and really uh alice uh Hugerson has done a great job here i mean I, for any runner to match up to simone abasol would be incredibly tough there's only a handful of women who can do it but what she's done is she's kept ahead she's not really made any big mistakes and crucially she's maintained that second place mm, and i mean she was facing a simone abasol that was running really really good mm. uh, except for this third control but i'm quite sure by now that it is it is greener than it looks like just before this vegetation boundary mm. that can be a bit yeah, it, it can to lead, lead to a situation where it's hard to predict what you... It, can, it, it won't match the picture you have in your head. So mm -hmm. she executed it well. And of course, in this situation, it's very tough for Hugoson to stay together with Simona Abersol. But she was able to keep the gap to the groups behind, uh, to the teams behind. Uh, and I mean, the gap is quite big. So right now, there's still... I mean, the, the gap is big, but there's still in contention if something happens if EFK Göteborg is doing a mistake on the fourth or fifth leg they still have a chance to be there and uh, get back into the competition so the second stick up it's going to be uh, well over the two minute mark but uh, the runner from Nidalen has done pretty much exactly what is expected of her and now is going to hand over <laughs> to uh, Anima Greta Halsken Nordberg the um Oh, do I dare use the word veteran? She's so strong. And again, would, this leg, this control is I mean, look, proving so difficult. No, the, so, the thing is not, uh, that's not the thing I'm reacting to. Oh. It's, it's exactly the same situation yeah. again. No one wants to take the lead there. But let's uh, get Hugoson to the finish and let's send out some uh, experience to this fourth leg. Yeah, Anne Margrethe Hauske Nuberg. Yeah, Hauske Nuberg ran the uh, the last leg for Netherlands to uh, to to secure them the win last year. She said, "Never again. I'm going to get look at the, the gap. Let I mean, it's, it's it. two and a half minutes. It's quite a good job here in the end by uh, Alice Hugoson. Uh, mm. She didn't lose too much time. Uh, was all alone from control seven and had like half the course left. Lost about yeah two minutes from there." That's quite well done. And here we have this group. Yeah, the group of hesitation. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's wanting to take uh, the lead. I'm hoping we're going to get to chat to one of that group, basically, um, to to find out what it, what it was actually like being in that group, because uh, a chaos, maybe, maybe a word to use. Um, a little bit of nervousness as well, but certainly I think dropping some time on the leaders. Here they all are then. There's probably there's at least seven runners in this group. I think seven runners who we count. There's Anna Dritkorn leading the way uh, there. Um, you can see Theresiana Shikova there in about fourth. We've got uh, Evely Kazuku there in second. We've got the team uh, Itito uh, in third there as well. But I mean, a good, I think, nine nine runners in that. A couple of these teams have already been disqualified, so maybe we'll see. We don't really know. We know the officials were kind of checking the, the boxes to know whether they, they have actually been disqualified, so we will we'll kind of see what happens um, when we... Again, maybe when they when they hand over. But this group has seen a lot of each other. In fact, they, they were kind of two groups that started out, uh, and by the time they got to control number four or five, uh, they kind of merged together in one group. Also swallowed up the uh, team uh, Iktisa. Uh, Korda is still then there as well. 
So loads of kind of the teams, the top teams that we'd expect to see there, I think uh, in that group particularly as well. Martina Ruch from uh, Cora gonna hand over to Kaiser Risby. Lisa Risby on the last leg for them. For all these runners kind of warming up, getting ready. There's Evely Karsaku, Theresiana Shikova. So the Estonian and Czech runners. Of course, Evely Karsaku getting a medal at a home European Championships last summer. Tereziana Shikova, great uh, Czech, well, mostly sprinter now, making some inroads into the forest despite some, I think, uh, some illness at the first round of the World Cup. And the two of them going over the bridge into the arena now. And very soon we will see them emerge. Here they are. So Yana Shikova. Mm. Running for Santa Uvestula. Gonna hand over to the French athlete Florence Anoe Vera Klemetinen on the last leg. So they've got a couple of couple of decent runners coming up. They could do some good things handing over into third. Now all of these teams in here, about five, six minutes down on the leaders. And we have been talking a lot about this group. Uh, I mean, I can understand a few of the runners here. If I would have been in the group here, mm -hmm. I would also... I mean, we have medalists from uh, European champs here mm -hmm. in this group. Of course, they rely on that person, but you have to be ready. You have to be mm -hmm. ready. I know it's easier said than done, but... <clears throat> <laughs> Do you think maybe a missed opportunity to to kind of catch some time or at least not, not lose as much I time mean it, as they I mean, in the end, it won't matter too much because I don't think they, will, they would be in the fight for the victory anyway, but it's a bit of a missed opportunity because they, as a group, could have worked together better. I mean, it's the... You have to, you know, it's unforked. It's as a group, chasing group, you have to do everything in order to be fast together. In this situation here, you, you don't find the fight against each other. You are together chasing the leaders. And I was a bit missing that feeling that they were doing this together. They were, yeah, they were trying to survive instead of trying to attack the leaders. So uh, that was uh, the store tuna runner Maria Olausen just uh, warming up there. So Tilda Osbury hand is going to be coming in. You can see in the yellow they're going to hand over to Maria Olausen in the fourth runner. Tove Alexanderson, of course, in the last leg. And these next runners, so some of the ones maybe with the opportunity to catch up some time later on. Stora Tuna after Ursa in there as well. Certainly Halden, I think they have Eleanor Ross on the last leg for them too. Whoa, mm -hmm. just a little bit of uh, hesitation, just to double check of the map as they head down there. Actually, there's no control they're looking for, just for a good way to get down to this mm -hmm. uh, second last control. But this isn't really the type of terrain that's going to track up, is it really? Mm. Is it hard I to mean, tell? here here in this slope, it will track up because uh, everyone is heading towards the second last control here. Uh, they're, they're, it's a bit bushy just here. Uh, everyone will run more or less in the same track. But in other parts, no, it's too, the runnability is too good. It's not wet at all out in the terrain. I don't think it will track up. Of course, I mean... Tomorrow you will see tracks because you will have so many uh, oh, runners yeah. out in the forest. But for the top teams, it won't it won't be decisive. Then you always have the controls, common controls from earlier legs, and of course there you will have tracks, but you can never trust them because maybe they got from another direction towards the control. Maybe maybe they're leading to another control. So uh, it's not that kind of advantage you get for the behind and even if I mean it's you have to be quite far behind in order to to have an advantage due to track so it's ah, doesn't matter in a relay like this 
Yeah, here's uh, Tilda Osbury from Storatuna handing over to Maria Olausen. Very strong uh, Norwegian runner. Probably having a little look at the big screen, trying to figure out. She'll know that uh, she's going to be one of the next ones to head out. Uh, okay, Pan who's there as well. Getting ready to hand over. So 11 teams handed over so far. Uh, here's the changeover. So we've had the top nine, a few of them dropping down. Look at Korda dropping down. They were second last time. They've got the two Risby sisters on the last two legs. Still, EFK is a very second team, still in that top 10. And Rio Larson ready now to take that changeover. Oyentate, Kirsi Nurmi. And the Pound Water who is saying to 12th and 13th position, 10 and a half minutes behind. Still two legs orienteering to go. We've got a 6.8 kilometer course. We've got an 8.4 kilometer course as well. Still to go. Uh, Mora handing over there. That looks like it was Paola Gross handing over to Sarah uh, Kindlund. Denisa Kosova on the last leg for them. And exhaustion on the finish line. I mean, yeah, great result for them so far. If you look at their uh, starting position, 584. It's a big improvement for them and up a couple of, uh, quite a few places there for the runner from Lynx. A few more of the teams making it in. You can see just how they're just showing the next uh, number across to the next team leg runner. Loads of cheers. Emma Biesmo there, great to see her running after her diagnosis of, I think, type 1 diabetes. She's been uh, trying to figure out how she can get back to running an elite level and how it's going to work for all her uh, blood sugar levels and insulin levels and everything. So it's great to see that she's been able to run for, uh, for her club today. There's the Team number one, 13 minutes down, dropping a few places on that leg. So this is the standing after three legs, after the long day. Uh, Simona Abris in the lead for IFK Göteborg and then uh, Alice Hugesson, uh, Nydalms Escort, two and a half minutes behind. And you see, can see that we have 20 teams uh, within just under 13 minutes. So still quite many teams uh, up there with a chance for uh, at least the top 10. Maybe not everyone involved uh, for the fight for the victory anymore. But a lot of things can happen. On Abersolt's first team after three legs. Did you enjoy your race? <laughs> yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was so nice. But uh, in the beginning, I made a uh, really big mistake. Um, so I knew that as well. 
And then, uh, yeah, I knew I had, I just had to push until the end. It was really hard with soft ground, but uh, yeah, I enjoyed it all the way. And beside that uh, mistake to the first control, has it been a, a good, good race or in tearing? Yeah, I think so. There were some small time losses, I think, but uh, otherwise I think I can be quite satisfied. Yeah. You had a big smile when you entered the arena here. Is that how, how it feels? Yeah, exactly. Um, it feels really good to like lead the relay for EFK. Um, after the first leg, second leg, and now there was a lot of pressure on myself. And uh, yeah, I'm so glad I managed to, to bring it home. And now yeah, I, I'm really sure that the other two are going to have some good races as well. And then we'll see what comes out. Yes, you have two experienced runners left, and uh, the arena speaker asked the question, are Yves Göteborg finally going to win this relay? What do you say? I hope so. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so uh, strong words from Simona Abersold. Um, hoping we're going to get a quick chat with mm -hmm. Evely Karski in a couple of minutes, but I want to catch up with what's been happening on mm -hmm. this leg four because it's... Just give us a second because we're been... waiting at the second control yeah. here and I think we will get the answer to your question very, very soon. I think we uh, will. Let's watch out and here. I think the question... The interviewer asked here was very relevant. Will IFK Göteborg be able to win this today? And uh, well, it's not as clear as it was a few minutes ago because here we have New Dalen uh, coming to this first TV control. It's not IFK Göteborg anymore. There was a big, big mistake at the first control for them. Uh, losing Illimons and lost about I don't know, two or three minutes? Mm, I think so. I, it was pretty disastrous. Had to go and attack that control like oh, two, a couple of times. Two, I think it was far more than two Because Nidal was two and a half minutes behind. Yeah, yeah. And now I think she might be two and a half minutes ahead now. So good news for the, for the team. <laughs> so <coach>. Shining up. <laughs> we yeah. want to see that. I'm hoping we might have a little gap. Here we go. This is yeah. the mistake. You can see she was very close. It's kind of a tricky area there. You have to be very distinct. And she was oh. so close to the control uh, in a situation like this. I often Oof. feel like, did, did she have the right control <laughs> code in her head? It or looks was it like something she went like to it because about she, five times. You could also you, see but that... But you could see how she goes back out to the path each time and comes back in again. And you could also see that they teamed up <laughs> together with the second team from IFK Göteborg. So they were heading out from this first or second control a little bit, depending on the forking, <gasps> together four and oh. a half minutes. That's a big time loss. That is a huge time loss. Uh, goodness me. They're still in second place, though, on the way to number two. We'll wait for them um, in a couple of uh, places. So um, let me see if we can uh, get back towards the race. Let me... Uh, right, I'm going to bring in um, Evely Kasku here. We'll take a little look. Uh, there. So with me now, and Evely, we wanted to chat to you because you were in that chasing group and it looked like you were uh, taking quite a lead in that group. Is that something you wanted to do? Uh, yeah, well, even though there it's uh, no forking, it was no forking course, and I knew that uh, uh, we all are pretty equal. Everybody can do mistakes, so you have to do your own race. And I tried to, to steal my own job while uh, trying to take the benefit <laughs> from the others <laughs> as well as much as I can. So, yeah. Tactically, how did you prepare for that long leg and in terms of maybe where you wanted to be in the pack? Yeah, I hope that uh, if our girls run well, then I get to the first in a pretty good position and uh, maybe maybe I have a chance to catch some fast girls, but definitely I, I most probably have some pretty fast girls also around me mm -hmm. and uh, it's just all about pushing hard and I knew when I do clap, I saw that at the beginning part of the course there there is a long leg and then I just tried to push hard in the long leg because that's where, to, where I knew that I can catch up. Uh, it didn't feel at all that I'm, I'm catching up. It feel, felt just terrible, felt so slow, but it was nice to start seeing uh, backs of some girls then at some point and then it was just all about uh, pushing a bit harder and catching them. What made it feel slow? Was it the terrain? Was it the navigation? Oh, well, the weather is just so hot right now and uh, it just... 
it just <laughs> felt like I, I can't run fast because it was so hot. But I think everybody felt like that. And uh, it's just uh, one of the first days when it's very hot weather and one of the first competitions in these temperature numbers. And so it, it just felt really, really hot today. And were you surprised that maybe some of the m mistakes going around alongside you or some of the hesitations in that group that you were in? Uh, yeah, well, we had <laughs> we had a one pretty pretty big mistake with the entire group together. Yeah. I think that was a funny moment. I think I was approaching the control like like I was going like straight to the control. I had everything under my control, but then it goes all around uh, behind and and then. I noticed at some point that there, far in the left, there is a contra, and then I was like, maybe my compass work, work wasn't still that good. And then I was just running to that contra, and everybody came there then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we were on the wrong contra. And then we started searching, and I must say that it was really good that we did a mistake, could take breath, yeah. <laughs> could, could rest at the same time there a little bit. So it was even. You could reset <laughs> as well, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I benefited from it, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it was great to see you get that insight from you about what it's like running in that pack. It's such a special thing with that unforked leg as well. Did, did you enjoy it, though? It was really enjoyable, really nice terrain. If we hasn't run today yet, then enjoy. All right. Well, thank you so much for chatting to us. We'll leave you there for now. We're going to get back to the race because loads of stuff is happening. But thank you so much. Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, let's head back towards the race. We will say thank you very much to the Estonian runner, Evely Karlsaku, for chatting to us. And take a little look here. Okay, so back then at the second control. Just seen a load of the teams through again. It looks like Nidalin is out in the lead. Let's have another look. This is, I think, the third, third control. control. Yes, indeed. And you can see that she just got a little bit too much to the left, but you can also almost feel the experience here, how to get back in a situation like that. I mean, it is a time loss, but it's not a crucial one. It's a few seconds. Uh, things like that can happen, but it's very important to have a plan in that situation. We have seen that uh, many of the runners from IFK Göteborg have a plan. Uh, it will be very interesting to hear from uh, Elin Monson what exactly happened at this second control because it, it, I mean, it seemed as if she was there. It didn't even seem that she had a no plan because she was at the right spot like two or three times. Uh, that makes me wonder if she had like the wrong control code in her head or something like that because, because it was very she, unusual because and what she did is she she did exactly what you're, you're kind of meant to do when you have a mistake like this which is go right i've got to attack it from a different distance she went out to the track she tried again but she did that like and five she went, times she, she went to both tracks both yeah up and down and that yeah that's that's really strange so it will be very very interesting to hear from her um but we are still here. I think it's the second control, maybe mm -hmm. the third a bit, depending on what kind of start you have. And we had eight teams here within five minutes. Yeah, it's <laughs> it, it, the whole start field spread apart again, and now it's like gone back together I mean, again. This is, um, it's, yeah. It's so interesting how you can have one leg uh, the long day there where you feel that you could go on for hours and it wouldn't change the situation and then you change leg and everything <laughs> changes just within uh, one or two minutes mm -hmm. still uh, the majority of this leg still to go and another one slightly longer last leg where we most teams have put their best runner on the last leg yeah, definitely. I, I mean, if you have the feeling that you can possibly win the relay, then you then you put the mm. best runner on the last leg, for sure. Espen Sinter still doing a good job. Mm -hmm. Here's Mario Lawson. So getting a bit closer again, of course. Only Also, we are due to this, to this mistake in the beginning by the leader. So if you to comp compare her to New Orleans, then you have to add two and a half minutes. Here 
Here we have the fastest times on this uh, long day. On and you can actually see that Teresa Janusiko mm. was in this group at the fastest time. But I, still, I think that they could have been just that little bit. Yeah, well, she must have caught up enough, like in that, that first part before we kind of saw her there. Uh, not sure what control this is, but there's certainly a mistake. This, Maybe uh, one of the third controls, if looking at the... Vascular. I think it is mm. the same control that we have seen. Uh, we've seen the problems for anne Margrethe Hausken. And you can see the difference in how you, the two of them handle it. For Hausken, it was a mistake by like 15, 20 seconds. Here it was at least a minute. Still waiting then at the second control. You can see 2.2 kilometers in. The next one we'll get a time check is at four kilometers into the 6.8 kilometer leg. But only 11 teams through in 10 minutes though here. Maybe some more early misses as well. And this is a bit of a bigger group. Is this Linné? Mm -hmm. It is. So see, I think it is Manorhus back there. I think I can spot Halden, maybe. Now I'm more or less guessing here. <laughs> Boyantetti maybe. And there we have Gimuko, Göteborg Mayona. Yeah, it was Boyantetti and Halden. Yep, Halden and Hanaway on the uh, fourth leg. Eleanor Ross on the last leg. Mayona. Very distinctive. Uh, very Zappa easy leggings. to see. They are very <laughs> easy. Your club is very easy to see. <laughs> thank, thank you. I know you were instrumental I, in I the kit tell you, design. I, I, I wasn't the designer of those uh, <laughs> tights there. <laughs> Leading her. Now we have Anna Nari for Latin Suni Stayats and Tampren Pyrinto, Södertälje, Rastik Harhut, Järla and Tisaren. Ah, you did say Tisaren, one of the ones to watch out for in the top yeah, 25. They had, they had a really tough uh, journey on the first leg, mm. they lost a lot of time there. Links. Hey. Hang on, we'll keep that in. Uh, okay, Lars Johansson, coach for IFK Göteborg. Everything was looking very good for you at the three first legs, and now all of a sudden a mistake. What is going through your mind? Yeah, it's uh, exciting. Uh, we knew uh, it's not finished in, till the last leg, so everything can happen. Now we have two teams chasing Nydalen, so we're still in it. But uh, you still have. Uh, optimistic about turning this again? Yeah, yeah, it's not over yet. It's uh, uh, lots of uh, controls to take, so we think we're gonna make two top teams. What uh, the feelings in the in the team after three legs? Was it still confident and calm? Do you think? 
Yeah, it looked uh, very nice. So, but uh, we know that everything can happen. So it's uh, tricky out there. So everything can happen. So we knew it wasn't safe. Okay, we'll just wait and see and uh, hope that you can have a nice finish. Thank you. I mean, I think it's always interesting hearing what the... Uh, that's kind of fast. There we go. Yeah. There Into go. second place it's a then. Really, really good run so yeah. far for Sana. Fast. You could see that she's so. You could really see the confidence. She's she's attacking the controls exactly mm. as she should. She has an own plan. She is going her own routes. Really like that style of orienteering. Here we have Elin Monson. Mm. Yeah. Two minutes behind. Oh, I mean, after that four and a half minute mistake at her control number I mean, two, she's, how is she going to recover from that? That's yeah, quite I hard. I mean, she's running the same speed as uh, Hauskin in the lead. Mm. If we, we had those two and yeah. a half minutes in the lead, then we have to plus the two minutes. It's exactly the four mm. and a half minute time loss. Um, but it's, it, of course, it's a difficult situation for her because she is not full of confidence now. And she has to can, she has to get back. And I think she has done it well to, to those other controls uh, we have seen now, or we haven't seen it. But mm. I mean, she she doesn't keep on losing a lot of time. Of course, she she lost a bit compared to uh, the second team, but we don't know about the four kings. Mm. And of course, Anna Fass is really full of confidence. She was able to catch the first team. She was having I mean, a good run so far. And that's the fun team, isn't it? The second team. It's, you've not got as much pressure on you. Of course, I mean, I mean can you believe it? they would love to be the first team, yeah. don't you think? Yeah, of course. I mean, Sanna Fast, she could be in the first team. It's, mm. it's a matter of... Must be, it must have been a very tough decision to not pick her for the first team. And then, of course, that's exactly the right reaction from her. She has to prove that... Just do your job and prove them wrong. Yeah. The next team, I think, is going to be NTNU. We Maybe. have got a few teams not mm. tracked, though, so um, we'll watch but out for that. But it is NTNU. It is NTNU. So NTNU, Emma Arneson on the, the fourth leg, Anu Misto on the fifth. This is Itisa. Yeah, Elsa Kuza on the uh, fourth leg. Alexandra Hornick, the uh, best uh, Polish athlete for quite many years, to be honest, uh, on the fifth and final leg for Iktisa. So those are the five teams, those two running together. That could be a pretty, uh, pretty handy group, those two running together at this point as well. Okay, let's have a little uh, look back then at some GPS. This is a little replay. So I think that was the control we have just seen. Mm -hmm. uh, but then... A long leg, and you can here. see they are already heading towards the arena again. So they are uh, going back to this uh, open hill. Uh, we are still in the relay, as is, uh, replay, as you said. One minute is the tail, so... Uh, it's still about uh, those one and a half minutes down to the second team of Ivka uh, Jettebori. And I think that New Dalen, yeah, she's heading quite uh, far east. But I think she's heading heading towards those paths yeah. and then trying to attack the control in an easy way yeah. from the east towards, uh, yeah, just the last meters into the forest then. Here is Calvin Rasti then uh, into sixth place. They've got Nia Nittinen here, strong runner on the last leg in Marika Taney. He's a very, very uh, experienced, particularly middle distance runner. And they've got a little bit of a gap now. So actually, we saw a lot of this group kind of in together. Looks like they've split up a little bit. And I think it's a very, uh, it proves to be a very decisive leg this uh, second last year. A uh, few of the teams did a great job. A uh, few others had struggles at uh, yeah, four kings or at uh, any of the controls. So it's kind of mixing up the groups again that we had at after the long day.
Mm, and we have Zunta Iveskla. Six minutes and 14 behind. Florence Anoe, as we saw, uh, Teresa Yanashikova was one of the biggest climbers on that third leg. Mm -hmm. And we actually, we saw she had the, the fastest leg on that one. Fantastic running from her. Good to see some of the, you know, the, the illness that she had at the World Cup in Norway. Hopefully uh, well behind her. This is Vestvik. Still going very strong. Let's say here uh, we have them. We have them in the graphics. Still don't know about their situation, mm -hmm. but uh, if we just look at the performance by every runner, that's really good. They would have been in eighth position here, or they are. We don't know. Mm -hmm. And back with some GPS, and you can see the differences. Uh, very experienced by Hausken Nurberi, going a bit more to the east, having this path in just a few meters in the terrain. Very, very easy control taking. And if you compare that to EFK Göteborg, I mean, both of the teams, first of all, you get through this stony area. You don't really know how stony it will be slow you down a little bit and then of course the control is much more difficult from there you're heading down the slope you have the the, the cliff uh, so you're you're not seeing the control from above uh, more difficult but at the same time I mean if you if you have any struggles then just go out of the yeah. to the path you but if you do that you lose behind. you lose 15 20 mm -hmm. seconds anyway so it's I think it's well played by New Dalen, actually. Mm. I think that's very, very experienced. Yeah, it's, a, it's kind of the right tactic at the right time for that kind of thing, to be honest. Um, looking very good. We saw Sorotino on the picture. See them in the yellow to the, on the right of this GPS tracking, just leaving control number seven. And it looks like... So Tilda Asbury climbed up from 20th place to 10th place. Maria Lawson is still climbing, was in 10th, now climbing up to 8th. They were... In 90th place at the at the finish uh, control after their first leg runner, so there's clearly, you know, the team selectors there have clearly put their best runners towards the end. Um, they've got Tova Alexanderson on the last leg, so currently, you know, actually catching up time on the leaders because they were 10 minutes behind, now seven minutes behind. Um, you know, what what gap is a gap that's too big for Tova Alexanderson uh, compared to the other runners? I feel like that might, you know, that's probably too much, but like, you n never say never with her. I mean, the. I mean, without any mistakes from the leading teams, um, I think the gap is too big because the terrain is not as tough and rough in order for Tuve to just be able to, to physic mm. physically close this gap. But, I mean, we have seen. Ilin Monson struggling at uh, one of the controls. There can, there's always a possibility. There are quite many runners in between, though, that get the chance first. So it's... You mm. never say never, but the gap is quite big. It is quite big indeed. Just following Ilin Monson here across the uh, wide power lines. And, and something we haven't really talked about is what Evelyn Castle can mention about just being warm there it's like the forecast was about 20, 22 25 degrees um spring hit this part of the uh part of the country part of the world very quickly apparently two weeks ago there was like basically it was still snow everywhere the snow melted very quickly we've had uh, very warm weather and a lot of those runners kind of training in cooler climates Sometimes it is a bit of a shock to the system to suddenly get some warm weather. Yeah, it is. But I mean, not a, not all of the runners live uh, up in the very north. So I think, yeah, of course, it's, it's one of the first competitions that it's really warm in, like, at. 10, 10 to 15 yeah, yeah. degrees, then suddenly it's like 25. It's a, yeah, it, it's a it is. It is shock, but it's the same for everyone. Yeah. So it's... <laughs> um, I, I wouldn't take that an, as an excuse. It's, it's kind of a thing that can distract you from your job. Uh, but it's it's not an excuse. And here, very interesting, you can see that New Dalen, uh, under Margrethe Hausken, she was choosing to go 
in between those uh, two forbidden areas, heading into the slope here. Uh, from here, heading towards this path Ooh. and then to the control and the other ones. Both teams from Yotabori trying to save some of the but climbing. But now they have to climb up this, though. This looks rubbish. Yeah, but I mean, it's uh, just a few meters. It's just here in this semi-open area until you're up there. If you, I mean, here it looks better again. Mm. Um, it, it's an interesting route choice, definitely. We'll see. Yeah, we've I not really seen that be problem being posed before. That, that Personally, option, I, think, I think the choice by Jotobor, like both teams, is quite good because yeah. you have to run this S-shape. And usually in S-shape, it's not really the thing you want to do. She has to climb quite a lot there. Uh, and mm -hmm. the control, I mean, the control isn't difficult from either side because you have those tracks there just before. My guess is that uh, New Dalen will maybe lose about 15, 20 seconds mm -hmm. here. We just saw a little picture there of uh, Sada Hagström. Going to go our on last leg then for this EF Core uh, team. Looked full of smiles. Uh, you know, she, she she's one of, if not the best orienteer in the world at the moment. You know, her results I mean, in the Norwegian World Cup were she's, fantastic. She's, she's so strong. definitely the orienteer with the best shape right now. Um, or at least she had that two weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> so I would still th uh, say that uh, it looks very good for IFK Göteborg. Because if you look, compare to the Lille, Sada Hagström, yeah. even if there is a gap of one, one and a half minutes, it's not easy to keep that gap. Mm. Mm. There she is. Uh Leah, uh, she knows her uh, runner is coming in in the lead and the fact that they can they get so much information these runners they can see enough on the big screen here like they just the atmosphere of this arena is going to be kind of Maybe is this does this build the pressure more than like an outside arena or this kind of setup? I don't know. I mean, the special thing here definitely is that you have the screen so close to the mm. warm up area, that's that's very uh, different. But look at the screen here, it was more than 20 seconds, mm. it was quite much faster. I would even say it could have been a minute almost yeah. faster to go there around for Sana Fast. Yeah, uh, I I don't think that Elin Monson was as fast as Sanna Fast on this <laughs> leg. Uh, and there is definitely a chance for the second team from, Jot from Gothenburg to come to the arena and to change over together with New Darlene. Yeah, they've got England Because England I'm sure on the last leg. she can see the back now. Uh, next control will be very interesting, control 10. Yeah. We have seen many, many of the runners struggling there. Only small struggles, but the number of them mm. that have been doing that is is actually quite a lot. This is Ingrid Lindenes then, so um, she's going to be that uh, last leg runner for the second team. Mm, but even a small struggle here can be quite a kind of decisive. Mm. Well, that's not the best direction for Monson there, getting towards this cliff. But she, as you can see in the picture, up to the left, she managed to get down to this. Streets, and now it's going to be interesting here. Yeah, she, I think Dalek. she needs to run along that street a little bit more, but she's gone basically straight into the terrain, I think. Mm, and you can see that uh, the difference know. between New Dalen and uh, the second team from mm. EFCO is just a few more meters uh, on the street there. You can also see NTN Nui staying on that road for a long time. I guess she will climb up this small path there, try to avoid uh, some of the rough areas. Team Tisaran. A few of the runners we'll see in the men's relay there later on. You can see that. Many of it, it is a bit nervous for the runners there. Mm -hmm. And look at this, uh, they are together Whoa. now. The second team from Gothenburg, Yevko Jottebori and New Dalen. So uh, due to this route choice to control nine, Sanavast was able to catch uh, up together with Anna-Margrethe Hausken and New Dalen. 
So now we will see Ingrid Lundanes and Tune Lee heading out together on this last leg. And the most interesting question will be how big is the gap compared to Sara Hockström? Yeah, this will be Sana Fast will uh, be so happy that she's just caught the back of Nidalen here. And the two of them, in fact, you can see the two of them just on the picture there. They're going to go out together pretty much onto this fifth and final leg of this Tia Mila women's relay. Here's third place then. Here's Aileen Monson. She went out in the lead. She had a lead of two minutes and 37 seconds, but it was a mistake to the second control. She lost four and a half minutes. She's done pretty good to, but to not Yeah, you have to give that. her that I think to we her should, we should give her a that, lot of credit uh, for this. She came back. She had this big mistake in the beginning, which was a bit special. We have to hear from yeah, that. But I then, am, I'm hoping we can hear from her. Uh, after that, it was quite okay. And I mean, she did take the smart route to control nine as well. She wasn't together with Sana Fast there. So very good performance after this struggles in the beginning. Absolutely. So Sana Fast, maybe the performance uh, of this leg. It'll be interesting to see when all the runners come back how she matches up with maybe some of those ones later on. But Sana Fast for EF4, Yetabaya, it. it's not the first team, it is the second team in the lead, just ahead of Nidalen. She's going to hand over to Ingrid Lundinez. So Hochstrom is in the bottom corner, going to uh, cheer on her club mate, not her teammate, her club mate. As uh, Sana Fast punches the control, Anna Margot Hauskin Norberg. The 40 something year old uh, is gonna just punch to finish into second place. The gap is only five seconds. Look at that, climbing eight places for Sana Fast. Amazing stuff. Passing over the map there, just holding it up so they can check it is the right one. Hauske Norberg, she's okay. done her whatever she could do there, but uh, couldn't hold I mean. on with a fast finishing uh, Sana Fast. Here is Aileen Monson. We have to give a bit of credit as well to Anne Margrethe Hauskin. <laughs> I mean, this is just amazing. She's such a legend of the sport, Yeah, right? I mean, she, last year she just took it home, won it for New Darland, and now this this time she did, does a great performance on the fourth leg. But uh, let's take here for Göteborg, the first team to the finish. And it is going to be very decisive how big this gap is because she will send out Sara Hauskin maybe the runner in the world with the best shape right well, now. Well, yeah, I think she's got the best shape. The gap's going to be 58 seconds as she comes through to hand over to Sara Hugstrom. What can she do? She took her first ever World Cup win in Norway just a matter of weeks ago. She's on fire right now. She's got two teams to catch. She's got 58 seconds. She's got 8.4 kilometers to do it to see if EFCO can win this relay. It's going to be really exciting and we've still got loads of other teams in the mix. Still anything can happen. I mean, we have seen that before on this fourth leg, on the very, very start. I mean, the, the control doesn't even look too difficult on the map. It was very close to, to a path, the one that Ailey Monson was missing. So you have to be careful wherever you are. Don't underestimate any of the controls. Um, but I'm quite sure that those runners on the last leg, they will be wow. very, very focused right now. Okay, here's a little bit of a group here. We've still got uh, Itisa, we've got Entenui, we've got... Is that...? Uh, this is a Col Morden shirt, but I think it's from yeah, the third leg. Team. What else do we have here? Is it Helsingin Sunistayat, maybe? Here we have a Calavan Rasti on the way to the changeover. Yeah, Calavan Rasti. It is uh, Mia Nittinen going to hand over to Marika Taney. Mm, very internationally experienced runner as well. Marika Taney, of course. Here we have her. Yeah. And Mia Nittinen actually catching up a couple of places on this leg. 
They've been there or thereabouts in, in, in the uh, top 10 from halfway through the first leg, just kind of maintained that similar position. Mm, Not really gone too far up or down. Gap but around Marika Taney there, she three is. and a half. Yeah. So a bit more minutes. So they will be there to kind of pounce if um, you know if any of those top teams make a mistake, they could be in with a chance of the top three. And re yeah, you know they they're still the third best placed uh, team here. So Marika Taney just cheering on her teammate, checking she's got the right one. There we go. And a time oh a time has come up. Okay, that's all right then. I was wondering if we had another qualification on our card. Iktisa, I mean, they have really, they've been kind of had a few, I think, new additions to their team compared to last year, uh, and Denui as well, but, uh, you know, they've really um, performed well, Iktisa, as a team. Mm, a um, very good Hornet performance. as well on, on the last leg. Yeah. That's a good runner on the last leg. You could feel it already at the Finnish Relay League that they had a strong team that they... Uh, that they will be a team that you have to look out for, but now, I mean, a fifth place at Team Mila, that's, mm. that's really good so far, and it's not a nobody they send out on this last leg. <laughs> uh, Emma Arneson here for Entenui is going to hand over to Anu Tuomisto into sixth place. I think we're waiting for Stura Tuna now. Marie Olausen, there we have her. Maria Lawson has been climbing, so she's caught up another place as well because she was eighth at the last place, seven minutes and uh, 26 seconds down. She's catching up maybe a little bit more, but we're not going to get the time check here. We get the time check at the changeover though. So actually maybe we'll see what happens when she's through to see at that gap, of course. Tova Alexanderson, 17 what time world champion. There's no better person, basically, to have on your last leg. So is that not so secret, secret weapon? There she is. And it will be will be very, very difficult, even for Tuve Alexanderson, mm. because now we have the situation that we have Sarah Hockström uh, that she has to beat by like five or six minutes, and <laughs> that doesn't happen on a normal day right now. Mm -mm. No, it does not at all. Here's Olausen then running in towards the finish here for Stora Tuna. Keep an eye on the time then. The time behind uh, Ingrid Dunez. Here's the next couple of runners in as well. We've got Sinta Yevescala, Florence Anari handing over to Vera Clement in the next. Here's Dora Tuna. Okay, watch out for Stora Tuna then here. Maria Larson just looking up at the board. Maybe she's looking to see the timings then compared to the other runners. The time, you see it ticking down, would be about seven minutes. And just over seven minutes here for Stora Tuna. They are into seventh place. So the time gap, seven minutes and nine seconds. So Maria Larson was actually catching on the leaders in general going to hand over to Tova Alexanderson who starts her 8.4 kilometers 57 minutes expected winning time for that last leg this is uh, Espin Sinto I think mm -hmm. So 
Hannah Hilo gonna hand over to Silva Kempi for Espin Sinta. Really uh, kind of like consistent team performance then for this Finnish team. over a little bit of cheers then on to the next team okay Sanna Fast Steve Göteborg second team first runner into the last changeover Sanna tell me about the race yeah it was uh, really good already from the start and uh, yeah I just enjoyed every minute of being out in the forest <laughs> yeah. you went out more than six minutes behind the leader and you came in uh, up front must have been a fantastic uh, both phys physically and technically yeah i was really surprised when i caught up with the uh, Margrethe in the in the end but uh, yeah it was a really stable race although i was, I was a bit un unsure about my route choices to the third last control but uh, otherwise it was uh, yeah really good to be out in the first day and uh, such a strong runner in the second team how is that possible <laughs> Yeah, I've been injured for the whole spring, so I haven't really been able to run any competitions. But uh, yeah, there are many strong girls in our team. So yeah, just being in one of the top two teams is, uh, yeah, it's really, really great. And now you're definitely in the fight for the gold medal. What do you think about the end? Yeah, I think it will be really exciting. And uh, Ingrid is a strong runner. We saw that in the World Cup as well. So yeah, it will be really fun to see how it ends. Okay, thank you very much and congratulations. Wow, interesting stuff when you have uh, yeah, that second team into the lead at this point. She's got just Ingrid Lindner to go at this point now. So, uh, very, very soon. Here's the team from Linné. And uh, we're still watching some more of the runners through. Soon we'll catch up with what has been happening on some of the other legs. As we sit through here, we've got uh, Aileen Monson on the... Uh, just join me in the commentary box. We really want to know. We saw um, the tricky situation you were in on, uh, I think it was your second control. I mean, it looks like you did everything to try and find that control. Do you know what happened? No, I just couldn't find it. I think I was one meter from, but I just couldn't see it. It was so far down. Oh, so it was really hidden in yeah. the air. Well, it almost looked, you were so close to it. We thought, uh, did you have the wrong, did it have the wrong number? Was there something, because you, you did, you know, what every coach says, which is to go Yeah, out. I did everything I could. I went up, I went down, I got the stone, I went to, to the back and I just went there three times and I couldn't find it. So I was just, it, does, it, it is here. <laughs> they forgot to put it out. Yeah. And then Anne Margrethe went away. Yeah. And I was like, what, where is it? And I went there, she was, and I couldn't find it either. And then Sana came and I found it eventually. Was it just the luck that you found it? I haven't found it without Sana. Yeah. Because uh, I have so, I haven't you know, trusted myself at that time. At that time. Uh, well, we were thinking then to go back and trust yourself after that mistake. Yeah. That must have been really hard. Yeah, I have some bad thoughts in my head. <laughs> and I just tried to put them away, push them away. But uh, it was tough mentally and tough physically when I have that bad start. Yeah. So what do you have to say to yourself to pick yourself back up? I have to just uh, think of Sarah to get her in the best position out in the forest and does not lose so much time to Sana. Yeah. And from that position, um, was it the rest of the race okay? Yeah, I did some small mistakes, a little bit to the left or a little to the right, but not many big mistakes. So I'm really satisfied with the rest, but I'm so disappointed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Were you able to enjoy any of it or was your brain still thinking back to that second control? Yeah, I tried to not think about it, but my physical 
was so tough. So I didn't know you'd enjoy it at any time. But maybe in the end. Just get to the end, get to the end. And were yeah. you, did you know what position you were in? Could you really no, tell? I saw Sana in the end, uh, up to the sec last mm. hill. But then I didn't see her, and I didn't saw Anne Margrethe at all. Yeah. So I didn't know. But I didn't know that anyone... No one else had passed me, so yeah, yeah. yeah you knew, you knew that. And then I guess you, you're thinking about Sara. You know, she's one of the best orienteers in the world at the moment. Yeah, you must have so much trust in her and yeah. the whole team together. Yeah, and she likes to go out chasing. So <laughs> yeah, I hope she's That's okay. <laughs> yeah, I hope she can enjoy it. Well, she looked very happy. But to yeah. have your second team in the lead as well, I mean. So much depth yeah. in your squad. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. It's, cool. <laughs> it's very cool. Here she is, though. Here yeah. is Sara Hoshan and into second place. A, sigh of, a, a breath of relief for you to yeah. see that. What's your reaction on seeing that? Yeah, I'm satisfied with her race. <laughs> so, yeah. And here's uh, Nidalen as well uh, with Tenelia on the end. Will you now go and watch the rest of the race or yeah. will you not watch? I will watch. You will watch. Yeah. Uh, will you feel nervous? Do you, yeah. do you get nervous watching? <laughs> yeah. But we have two teams in the lead, so yeah. I mean, you're in the best yeah. possible position you yeah. can be. The, this team, uh, it's amazing. All right, thank you so much thank for you. chatting to us, for, for explaining the, uh, the very unusual mistake that went on there for seconds. So thank you for talking to us. We'll get back to the race. Uh, and uh, we are following, I think there is Sarah Hagstrom there. So the chase is on. We've got two teams from EFCOR in the lead. New Darlings, uh, Tonalia dropping down then one place into third. And uh, let's have a little look then at this first guess, part. <laughs> there has been a mistake because yes. otherwise uh, things like that would not have happened. I'm, I'm surprised that New Darlings chose to go down there. Um, I think it's a bit unnecessary uh, and you see that she lost quite a lot mm -hmm. of time doing it. Uh, in my opinion, the way uh, Sarah Haugström approached this control was was better. Uh, you can see a good execution here towards the second control by Ingrid Lundanes. You can also see that they are splitting up. Uh, Sarah Haugström trying to stay quite close to the red line. Uh, Nydal a bit off direction there. Maybe had a bit of help of Sarah Hagström. Uh, I doubt that she would have found that control so quickly if she would not have been able to spot Sarah Hagström punching the second control. See that Iktisa heading a bit far, or not only a bit, quite too, quite much far to the west. Guess there will be a time loss pretty soon for her. This is Tune Lea. Punching at the third control. But uh, we've got to factor in the four kings, you know, for this. You know, they've had, you can see kind of there, they look slightly different lengths. You've got a. It's definitely better to have the D1. Yeah. Uh, so, with an advantage for sure for uh, Yvko Yatabori. This is Calvin Rasti, Marie Katani here. Mm -hmm. Still in that fourth place then. And you can see, of course, it's an advantage now for Sarah Agström. It's a bit better runnability towards the control. She's closer to the red line. Uh, and she had uh, shorter distance to go. So if we remember, it was uh, 30, 58 seconds between the two um, Gothenburg teams. Well, no, it's a bit more than mm, a minute. It is a bit more. But still very early into this fifth leg. Following Nidalen here, I think. Tonalia. Mm. No problems at the control four. Is she able to see? Yeah, I was going to say, is she able to see Sarah Hagstrom? Because they're not too far Should away. Should be. 
But this is back to control uh, three or two. This is two. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. approaching the control. And we don't forget we've got some of the earlier um, leg runners in the mix as well. It's been Sinta, I think. Oh no, it's a different team. Yeah, it's a yeah it was team. from the forward play. <laughs> it's very hard to see. I think we are waiting for Antenne. We also know that Iktisa was about to make quite a mistake. Yeah, we could see them heading towards the track on the last time we had a little look at the GPS. So see on the GPS that NTNUE is not quite on the right direction towards the control. And is you know what are the what are the most pressure legs? Is it this one and maybe the first one? Or are really they're all pressure? <laughs> Everyone will say my my legs are most pressure. I mean it's a different kind of pressure. Uh, you got the pressure on this one if you are in the leading group, if you are on mm. like the, the leader, if you are chasing, it's not so much pressure. Mm. Uh, mm. The first one is pressure because you have to build a good kind of... Uh, yeah, you have to, to, to put a good ground for the rest of your team. And it's so decisive. We have seen that with T7, for example, that they struggle on the first leg. You're more or less out of the competition after that. Um, it's not important to win the first leg. Here we have two uh, Alexanderson. Uh, still seven and a half minutes. Mm -hmm. And it is as well after this big mistake. Um, but it, it, but it, I think it's a bit more pressure on the... F yeah, it's so hard to say. On the first leg for more of the runners at least. And here we can see the mistake by T. So you can see she gets far too way to the west, ending up at this path there. No good work with the direction. The same for Antenne She was a bit closer, but she got kind of distracted by... Oh, you can see that her... Uh, the way she was dealing with this mistake wasn't really the best either. Have <laughs> they put tape on their tops in the number five? Yeah. It's running the fifth leg. <laughs> yeah, just in case you're confused. <laughs> Actually, what, what you could really do is really but mess with everybody and put a different number no, but on the No, the thing the is that fifth. they are often cheering uh, to each other on uh, within the... Mm. Like there, there are so many teams and when they see them, the, they know which team and it is and which leg. And they're a university team, Yes, they right? are from, they're from, the, from Trondheim. Where? The Technical University in front of, and exactly. they have loads of teams, right? They have many teams, yeah, and they have uh, not some only... Some of them are very top teams and some of them not. <laughs> they're kind of having the hooligans, the orienteering hooligans as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they really will go to the max cheering on their teammates, right? And uh, let's take a look at this recap. Uh, no problem for Lundanes. No problem for Sarah Hagström. And no problem for Tunelia. Almost together here. That's mm. what we have seen so far. Heading to this fifth control. Quite sure that she can spot Sarah Hagström. Still keeping quite good pace there. Nydalen. You can mm. see how... Uh, IFK Göteborg's second team is using this vegetation mm -hmm. boundary. She tries to get every help she can to get to the control. But now she's a bit in trouble heading towards this boulder there. But she should be able to you notice be able where, to she that where she is. And, yes. the, and the marsh as well, I think. Has to go to control E. But I mean, uh, she's losing a few seconds there. And then this is maybe... I mean, it's good to have F here. This is sh definitely shorter, right? F. Or is it yeah, too close um, to call? It's, yeah, it might be a bit shorter also because you can approach the control in a, in a better way. I mean, it's not, 
it's a bit you can see that there were quite many features that the place where New Dalen is at the moment it tells me that it might be quite stony uh, it's it's not just uh, the runnability might not be as smooth as it is between uh, at the point where Sara Hockstrom is at the moment so I think it's it's a good one now they see each other there <laughs> Londoners and Hockstrom and of course they'll completely ignore each other <laughs> <laughs> I so think it's a very good I feedback. That's what I do with all of my teammates when I'm orienteering. But that's a very good feedback for yeah, Hogstrom now. She knows about the speed. She knows that uh, she's still in second position. Uh, she has to be careful. She has to be focused. Yeah. But it shows as well for Hogstrom that she won't get it for free here today. <laughs> never, never. I'm. This might be control seven. Yeah, yeah. Four, point, four kilometers away, three. You see, we've got actually three TV controls here on this one. Uh, so we should see the leaders really, really soon and get a chance because it was, the gap was th 58 seconds at the changeover between these two Gothenburg teams. Then it was like well over a minute. There's Ingrid Lindenez. Mm -hmm. And now we get the, we're going to wait to see Sada Hagstrom. I'm sure she's caught up a little bit by the virtue of that forking, but let's see where she is. Oh, I can see a blue top. Ah, there she is. Here she is, oh. yeah. Oh, it's not much of a gap anymore. 17 seconds. <sighs> and uh, let's see how big the gap is now down to New Dalen. And I think that New Dalen is in trouble. Oh. She's not punched the sixth control yet, so the control before this one. So now it looks very, very much like a double for Yevko Jöttebori. They've never won uh, the Team Mila women's relay before, and they now they might win like it twice. It feels like they're overcompensating now. <laughs> they are overcompensating. It's because so many people have been asking them, when are you going to win it? When are you going to win it? When are you finally going to win it? Uh, you know, the men's team has been so successful over the years. Uh, they, can they add to what the women are doing as well? Mm, still no Some punch for New Some like, runners, these ones. No, still no punch. Oh. And uh, Tona Lea, the Norwegian runner, in some trouble. Yeah, and she has to be careful right. now because there are runners behind her as well. Who have we got chasing? Remind us. There you have uh, Calvin Rusty. Marika <coughs> Taney on last leg for yeah, her. Exactly. Still tuna. tuna. But I mean, the gap there, it's too big. It shouldn't be possible. Now I think we got the punch for New Dalen. Uh, so it's still about one and a half minutes until she will be here. These are still uh, runners from previous legs. Mm. Oh yeah, it will be take a while, yeah, about a minute, a bit more until we will have the next runner here. Interestingly, they've not got any uh, safety pins to attach their numbers on today. They're all, they've actually just been stuck straight on their tops. Um, and we were doubting the staying power, weren't we? Um, let's not lie. We th we thought they'd all be get ripped off. We'd see uh, we'd see numbers around the whole forest, but they um, seem to be staying on, which is good yeah. for us. So it's we not can green figure enough. Out who they are. No, it isn't green <laughs> enough. It's a very white forest. It is. Which I think you know, for a lot of these top runners, whenever you go to a kind of certainly a World Cup race, but even like a world ranking event or anything. You, they they want to send them to very green areas to make it really tough. So the fact that you actually get to run a big race in something so white as this, ah, oh, it's uh, it's a treat. Uh, it is, um, and it also leads to the fact that I'm not expecting too many mistakes here on the last leg when mm. we have the real like the world class athletes. Mm. Uh, they can handle terrain with good visibility. Of course, you have, you have to be careful at any time because it's also these changes in terrain that are. Yeah, kind of difficult, but here we have Tunelia. Yeah, not gone the most direct route into this control, but it, it's not a mistake anyway. Uh, it was a mistake to the previous control. She has dropped a long way back. So what the time? 3.23, two to three minutes last. She has to be really careful now in order to defend this third position. Mm. Is she gonna definitely going to switch into... 
locked out mode. She's yeah. going to want to try and do something to make sure she doesn't do any mistakes. Let's have a yeah. recap then of yeah, this is you what see happened. The small, small mistakes for Londoners as well. She got to the wrong boulder there, but she got uh, back on track quite quickly. But you see New Dahlen, she was too high mm. up slope, just running a bit around, not really spotting this boulder, and it took about yeah, two minutes. And we were a bit worried that she was just going to keep going north and yeah. run completely down the and slope. Look but at this. Yeah. I mean, Calandraste is. Yeah, it's not much more than half a minute. Mm, Calvin Rasti could run themselves into a third place if they keep doing that. Success already so far for uh, Ithko in the uh, youth relay. And uh, let's have another look here. Mm, Iktisa, Sturatuna, Tove Alexanderson here. Good control Ooh. taking, shaky yeah. for Iktisa again. A mistake, and Tenui in trouble again as well. They were struggling at control two, both teams here. And struggling at control three. For me, yeah, you know, they've, they've had much more success, those teams, their runners at, at the start. And when a lot of their, a lot of the teams have like their out and out best runner on the last leg, um, it's, it's so hard to match that. Mm, and I mean, they... They have oh, to be on, quite attacking here quick, as well. Watch this because mm. these are the two leading teams, though. And I think we should. This is still a replay. Um, and I want to just check. So, Ingrid Lindner for see, Gothenburg 2, Ivko th Gothenburg 2. This is quite a tricky leg because you have more or less no features at all until you come here. You get mm. this yellow bit and then you have the marsh that helps you. But it's, it's very important that you keep good direction. You can also see that the uh, Sarah Hockstrom now, I mean, they're running together now. Mm -hmm. And you can see the switch there. Now it's Hockstrom in the lead, but you can also mm -hmm. see from here that <laughs> both are reading the map. Uh, London is, isn't just following towards this boulder. Yeah, they look like they've You could, you could really feel that she spotted the boulder <laughs> and noticed that she has to head down. Mm -hmm. New Dalen, good direction on this control. Oh, so on the far. red line, yeah. You can see Sturatuna there behind. And Iktisa. And finally got this GPS device here. Yes, yes. Well, uh, you know, they started a long way down, a long way back. You see the number is 629. Um, so massively improved performance compared to last time. Uh, so, which is explains why they weren't given a. a um they must have mispunched or something last year. <laughs> I love. I love that we speak to the, the team coaches. Like <laughs> when I watch when I watch sport in um, in the UK, like we never chat to team coaches in the middle of like athletics or anything like that. But it does seem to be a thing that Swedish TV like to do, and it's always really funny to see what they're able to do. And it's uh, interesting here when you have this replay and we see the different faces of Elin Manson <laughs> and uh, Sara Hogsdam. Really, that Sara Hogsdam is. Looking forward to head out to the forest and of course Elin Monson very disappointed we heard it before. I actually agree with her. I don't know what she could have done differently. Yeah. Sometimes you're just unlucky and you don't see the control. Of course, if she would be a hundred percent sure that she is perfectly right, she would stay there at the place and relocate. Mm. But if you're there and you don't see the control, we have seen in the picture that she, she was there, basically, and then it's hard, of Okay, course. here's the leaders. Sada Hugstrom has gone ahead of uh, Ingrid Lindenes. These are the two leaders. That's control number 11 then. They're now climbing back up the hill here. But the two of them, they can see each other. The two teams from Ivko, Jutteberg, together still. And... Well, that's over half of this course done now. Mm, and it's kind of the turning point because mm. now they turn back towards the arena. Uh, we see that uh, New Dalen able to... Yeah, I think the gap is gr is growing now yeah. again compared to Calvin Drasti. Maybe a small mistake. By Marika well, Taini. we saw New Dalen just completely on the red line to eight. I so great execution there. If uh, we will see Tuve Alexanderson in a few controls mm. together with Calvin Drasti. Uh, 
it's um, it's not out of the question. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you if you would continue as the race has developed so far, that's definitely a situation that we a scenario that we can imagine at least. So compared, so Tova Alexanderson started seven minutes after the leaders. Then at 2.2 kilometers, she was 7.28 behind. Then at four kilometers, she was 6.27 behind. So uh, uh, you're not catching enough there, really. Not compared to the leaders, no, of course not. For me, the question is now, I mean, you can see that uh, Lundanis is running actively. She's not just following. Oh, you yeah. could see that to control towards control 10. You can see that now she's not just behind. She's beside more mm. or less, uh, at least if we can trust the GPS. But the question for me is, I mean, we have Sarah Hogström on, on one side and uh, she is, I mean, we, we got proof a few weeks ago. She is the runner in best shape, maybe from all of the runners uh, what h- what to do now for mm. london is is sh- her tactics the kind of safe to get this second position or will she try to attack and try to win the relay and what does sara hagstrom do does she kind of uh, she will sit? attack i'm Did, sure no, she, but she does attack. she sit and kick or does she try and break london early i mean they'll I know each other very well you know they're, they're trained together me, a lot the smart thing would be for her to attack before that's that's what I think because she she is faster physically I, it, she's but in such a good shape is that more risky because then you know if they at least if they're together and they go wrong then they go wrong together yeah yeah you <laughs> I mean whatever I mean t- at the moment I think that the tactics at the moment for both of them I, I think it will end up like this that they either way uh, Sarah Oxen will be able to get away early or then they will stay together mm. for quite a long time mm. and try to s- kind of save those two top spots for Yevko Yatebori and then it will be a sprint for the victory and then yeah I agree I see definitely an advantage for Sarah Oxen mm. yeah I can kind of see them sticking together do you think they'll say anything to each other I can't no. imagine they will no I don't think so but do you have to talk in order to be communicating? Well, well, yeah, yeah. They know each other well, so um, there's a lot you can say. And I mean, you're, we are on the on the last leg. They, uh, quite sure that they will uh, that they won't expect any forkings when we get very close to the finish, mm-hmm. because usually the last leg isn't forked just on the last bit. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I think then. Yeah, it, it will be interesting oh. to see how it develops. And I think, I think this is at control 11. Yeah, there it is. Another mistake here. Mm-hmm. Oh, sh- close she's to the so control. Close. I'm not sure uh, where exactly the control is, though. She's she heading down. Yes, she is indeed. heading down. And now, let's see. She's just see. not quite got the slope control, really. We're waiting for Calvin Rusty. We are. Uh, Marie Katani. And uh, Tova Alexanderson also on the chase. Here she is, though. This is feeling scrappy here for uh, Tonalia. And she's got yeah. to try and do something different, I think, to regain that control. Because uh, Calvin and Rasti are approaching. I think we might wait here. I'm hoping we're going to wait here at this control to see if we can see uh, the Calvin and Rasti runner, Finland's Marie Katani. Here's a recap. Yeah, you can see she's very close, just heading down um, into this re-entrant a bit further down. If she would have looked a bit to the left, she might have spotted this cliff there, maybe the green area. But I mean, yeah, things like that can happen. I think she, she didn't just run away and started looking for the control. You could feel that she was relocating. And Is this a miss as well? Uh, she's Surely she's too low here. Yeah, she's Here's too low. It, it, it's quite the same as we have seen yeah, before. Yeah, I think so. Also heading to this re-entrant a bit further down. But she's slow. not stopping. Like, no, um, exactly. You could, you could feel that uh, Tunelia had a feeling about mm. the distance. She had a feeling that mm-hmm. she should be approaching control now, stopped in the re-entrant and started to relocate. And There's a risk that uh, Marie Katani mm-hmm. is overshooting this control bay quite a bit. And that, you know, that that feeling about distance, it's almost like using the force. It feels like, you know, she's got to... That all comes from experience, right? <sighs> yeah, or how focused you are 
I mean, she should be able, if she had control all the way in, she would have noticed. Even I mean, you can go too far, far to the left, uh, but then you should feel that the distance that you should should stop now. Mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't get this feeling, so my I think that she was a bit unsure already before approaching the the circle. But okay. uh, here's Tove. <laughs> there she is. And there's Tove and. Uh, so she really is catching then. And is that good news for New Dolan? Yeah. <laughs> New we'll Dolan make a mistake. So does Calvin Rusty. Oh. The gap oh. between those two teams stays the same, but Stora Tuna catching up and the two leading teams getting away. And here we are waiting at the 12th control, so we, we are waiting for the two leading teams now. Uh, and the question is, are they still together? Yes, indeed. Uh, it's Sarah Hagström in front. It's Ingrid Lundanes behind. Uh, my feeling is that she is running quite uh, Try to aggressively. attacking, yeah, aggressively. Yeah, she's in such a hurry to get away from that control, but Lundanes is keeping on her toes. Four seconds is the gap, and that's that mm. looks pretty good. I mean, you're finding. Uh, but you can see that she's pushing really yeah. hard now. I think it's the place where she's attacking now. There's not a big uphill. I would have uh, expected that she would try to get away to control 12 already because she had this climbing here. You can see it that she would push on this path because it's the place where she can mm. physically run away. Uh, she wasn't able to do that here, but it felt that she is a pushing very, very hard uh, out from control 12, which can be a chance as long as she has a good direction out from the control. Can be a risk as well, of course. Always a risk, always a risk. Uh, so we just saw them there at control number 12. You can see all the chaos that ensued around control number 11 back in the picture there as well. Um, uh, really only kind of now some downhill controls let's to Let's be honest. Uh, the interesting part is in the which very top now. Is, it's which, which of the two teams will win. There's loads of uh, runners there for EFK Yotabori there with the club flag in the club kit. They're going to be waiting to see which one of the teams is going to be uh, coming into this ice hockey arena first. Proleptio's ice hockey arena. They're doing their own things. There's only a few minutes left to go. And of course, the winning team are going to want to. Well, I don't even know if they're going to be able to get to run in uh, with the leaders. Look at that. So let's have a look. Uh, here we got the feeling that Hongström is pushing quite hard. Mm. Uh, and you can see that there is a gap opening. I think, in my opinion, that's exactly the right thing to do for mm -hmm. Lundanes going slightly different way when she feels that there's a risk uh, mm. for, for the gap to open anyway. Uh, but definitely an advantage now for Sara Hoxham and this will be very, very tough now for <laughs> London as to close again. Um, but there's always a risk. I mean, as you mentioned before, when if they stay together and get to the second last or last control, I see a clear advantage for mm. Sara Hoxham. Uh, if she does a mistake now, there's a risk that uh, London S will just be able to pass her without Hogstrom to notice, but I mean, in the shape Hogstrom is at the moment, that, yeah, it's understandable that she tries to get away. Yeah, absolutely. That's, I think, is the slot of the second team there. And uh, I can is tell you there are, it seems that there's, no, this is a route going route straight. Here. Could have uh, taken the route around as well. You can see that uh, Hogstrom staying to the left in running direction. Lundana seems to go more straight there. Uh, and you can see there Stora Tuna overtaken Calavan Rasti. So Tova Alexanderson overtaken Marika Taney. Still about a minute up mm -hmm. to Nudalen. And it's not so far to go from here. And uh, 
like are the marshes likely to be bad? I mean, is it worth even speculating I, about the state has, of the marshes? It's a I mean, big we, are, one. we were talking about that before that the snow was staying here mm. for quite a long time. Just two weeks ago, it disappeared. So the marshes okay, are pretty bad. Yeah. Fans of the Gothenburg and also runners, I think. What do you think about the uh, relay? So, uh, what's going to happen? Uh, I mean, we couldn't have uh, wished for a better scenario. So, yeah, we're really, really excited and we're just glad to have two teams in the top. Uh, does it matter which team is first in? <laughs> no, not really. I mean, we're so happy. Okay, and uh, do, you, do you want to give us a tip who will be the first over the finish line? Uh, it's hard to tell. They are both like really strong runners and really strong downhill runners. So it's going to be a tough fight till the end. Okay, thank you. Exciting. I was expecting Isia Basse there to say uh, the second team, which she is a part mm -hmm. of. Uh, she ran the third leg there for uh, for the second team, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, it's a very diplomatic. Back answer. with some GPS. We see that they're splitting up. Uh, Hagstrom avoiding this marsh. Uh, London has almost eager. <laughs> seems <he> almost <laughs> to be oh, eager to get into there, yeah, even yeah. going crossing this very deep bit. Uh, and uh, you can see the advantage now like a bit more than a half a minute, almost exactly yeah. half a minute. Uh, so definitely an advantage for Zara Hagström now. Uh, we have one or two controls left. This is the 14th, no it is the 12th control, right? Yeah, yeah it is the 12th control. So we control. are waiting for Nydalen. Uh, in the very top of this relay we have, let's say, two orienteering controls left and yeah. then we have two running controls left. Oh, all still to play for. Yeah, two fairly tricky controls. Here's New Darlin. New Darlin. Mm -hmm. Looking around a lot. You can see she's not just not just maybe she feels confident that she's on it, but just wants to be looking around just in case. Can really get the sense that she's gone the right distance. Okay, let's uh, have a little look, see who is chasing as well. In the next team we are waiting for is Dura Tuna, Callum Andrasti, but this is the in mm -hmm. interesting bit. Yes, uh, that Lundanes? looks like Ingrid Lindeners, I yes, think, because it's the dark hair there of her. But I think that we have Sarah Hagstrom yeah, uh, a bit ahead. ahead. Yeah, I think so. I wonder if we're going to be able to pick her up somewhere, watching out for the blue. She oh, there she is, just crossing yeah. this uh, ski slope and now. So uh, you can see that is the distance between these two runners. So now there's only one orienteering control left. It's the one just after this slope here. It's not the most difficult one of the ones we have had in this slope. So yeah. if she has the right direction, you get uh, kind of help of this um, ski track there as well. Yeah, you can use the, the, there's some jumps on this track and you can use those to kind of get your height. It's a different control hurt there for the leaders, I think. Uh, there's a Lundanez. Yeah, and you can see the gap uh, more than 30 seconds now. Yeah, you can see you've got the, she's kind of just hugging the, the side of those trees, uh, very clearly marked on the map. You've got a lot of the pylons as well. I think, I'm sure there are a few thoughts in uh, Sara Hagstrom's head right now. Uh, no, heading time. into this circle at the third last and maybe the last orienteering control of this course. Looking very, very good for IFK Göteborg. And here we have Ingrid London as chasing still uh, Sara Hagstrom. Yeah, I wonder if we can see Sara Hagstrom really, really soon. Uh, the, she looked like she'd made a really good... Uh, like kind of direction to the control. Marika Taney, another mistake here. Mm -hmm. Kalaban Rasti. But maybe not the most interesting part because we <laughs> are waiting for Sara Hagström to this second last control. And here she is. Here she is. There we go. To dead on the line here. Sara Hagström. And she really reads her map really carefully for this very, very last section. But it's been years such a and dominance. years of waiting, oh. and now we have a double victory for IFK Göteborg because uh, Ingrid London has punched this last orienteering control as well, and nothing will happen here. No, I mean, it would have to be some massive disaster. We can. Get, there is the last control just on this kind of swimming part here. We're going to go underneath the building. Here is Ingrid London into second place. 
And could, uh, you know, if Cork couldn't have written the story better if they had tried, because they are going to take positions one and two on this relay to take their first ever win on uh, this women's team relay. relay. Almost the dancing year. down the <laughs> Yeah, last she can take the here. high fives here. They've never won it before, and it's going to be such a commanding win. They've won the youth relay already today. They're going to win this women's relay. They're going to not just win it, they're going to get second place as well. Sarah Hartstrom smiles here as she heads towards the finish. She kind of almost does. It feels like she's a little bowed. There's so many people going to give her a big hand as she heads here in towards the finish. She has ages to celebrate. Uh, she is enough ahead of her teammate Ingrid Lundenez and this team, I tell you what, have been fantastic from start to finish. And Victoria everyone is rising down. in the stadium here, so are we yeah. for IFK Göteborg. Everybody stands and applauds this fantastic team, Sarah Hansen who went into the arena. She hugged her whole team and it's just the last few stages. Ingrid Lundinez will be delighted to take this second place, to take this double victory for EFK Göteborg. The photographers are lining up as this team of five rounds the last corner. They can take this garland here and this team of five. This team of ten, I would say. This team of ten pretty much have done almost nothing wrong. They take turn around and already are here to celebrate with the second place team who also run up towards the finish line position one and position two for IFK Göteborg absolutely dominating this relay I mean they should enter this team in uh, the 10, 10 person team in us straight away they do like, give all the guys a run for their money this is incredible bunch of women to take the two top spots the last year that the women's relay is as it is in completely in the daytime historic moment to take their uh, first ever victory and maybe the most relieved runner of all of them <laughs> in <laughs> months and then yes. just hiding Sarah Harrison as we talked about before I mean she had she was there she didn't do anything completely wrong and uh, just poor pure joy here mm. of those 10 runners incredible I mean it's it's one thing to I mean it's a big big margin oh. uh, just between the first team and the third spot but you have two teams up there and having still this margin oh. that's just incredible it is absolutely absolute madness and finally this team can all kind of see each other they can congratulate each other because after four odd hours of uh of orienteering and running i mean they're just absolutely wiped the floor with it and re and if you look you know let's look you can look back over some of the some of the past ones they were leading almost all the way around apart from alien monson's mistake and then catching back up from that incredible stuff Oh, okay. Now we're looking for third. Mm. Oh, th this route choice could... I'm a bit worried for Nadal and now. Yeah, I'm also <laughs> worried for them. This was a bit of a strange loop round for uh, Tova Alexanderson mm. for Stora Tuna. It's oh, half a minute still. Okay. Should be enough if you don't miss this 15th control. Oh. can just see how the gap is getting less and less here. Mm. There's yeah. a lot of looking around going on here. And just I wonder if you think we can see left. Alexanderson in the same shot. Yeah. I mean, uh, if Alexanderson doesn't spot her in front, then I think uh, it's over. Yeah. Oh, oh, there, there she, she is. is. <laughs> She's making fast. Still a lot of running left should be enough though should we said um the some of those 10 women from from the two teams should be running a, a, a team Mila team the 10 person relay team Ida Edvig Christensen Ellen Monson 
uh, Victoria Hester, Bjornstad, Sarah Hugstrom, Mary Turner Erdem are part of IFCO year to break or a fourth team, uh, which mm, is going to be run. They're all well, female teams. Good luck there. to the third team then, if this is the fourth yeah. team. <laughs> Uh, they could very well be uh, vying mm, for best uh, uh, all-female team. Here we have uh, oh. Tove punching in control. Where is Tunelia? Where is Nydalen? Here she is. Oh. Heading down the slope. It should. It should be enough. It should be enough. But if anybody can I'm take it... I'm not sure it. if oh, she is aware she is. of the situation here. Oh. And She's not pushing too hard, is she? I don't... No, she isn't. Ooh, but Tova ooh. is. Tova uh, Alexander yeah, yeah, yeah. is closing. Honestly, I'm. Ooh, uh, the, this is going to be tight. What a nightmare for This Nina is going to be tight. And I tell you what, the gasp that went up here in this arena. And it's so hard to to level up again 15, once you have slowed 10, 15 down. Fifteen seconds. There she is, looking back. Now she realised the situation. She now the she's speeding up now. again. She is. She maybe she was. And it's so unnecessary because if she just had speeded up before, there would not have been any chance for Tove oh, to get well. closer again. You never quite know. Oh, but it is too much, isn't it? It's oh, too much. I don't much. know. I think she's closing. Ah, that's too far. So, Nidal and the uh, defending champions. Here they are coming through the uh, passage now. Donalia working so hard. This is a fight for her life now, for her club, for her teammates. Where is Tova Alexanderson? Is she closing here? This is going to be really tight. There's uh, the uh, store between the team with Maria Larson on the left. Tona Leon just checking over her shoulder there. Alexanderson is closing. There is a move. And there are still many meters to go. Tona Leon has to work so hard, so do both of them. This could be the closest result we're going to have. Ah, this should be enough. This is enough. This should be enough. There's going to be a big uh, everyone standing up here. They're going to applaud with Alan, who won here last year. They will do enough, I think, just to, the, to take this third place. Just, just holding on the 17 time world champion for Tosorati and the Tova Alexanderson. And she's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> she does just. Hold off, Tova Alexanderson of Storatina, who does need to punch the finish. And those her teammates have absolutely stormed this running to congratulate her. Oh, Tova Alexanderson caught up, was catching, 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 but the uh, the the, uh, the line came just at the right place for Nidal in here. And what a shock this must oh. have been for Tunelia to yeah. see Tova Alexanderson. Um, I mean, it's a few of the last meters possible for her uh, to catch. <sighs> yeah, that's a shock. <laughs> Just about uh, in time that she noticed that there's some someone coming from behind, Whoa. chasing her down. This is Marika Taini for Kalimander Asti. Yeah, not the uh, cleanest run then uh, for Marika Taini. And uh, the Stora Tuna team are uh, just kind of consoling their final leg runner. Let's have a look here. This is how mm. she was caught you down. Can you see look at the, the seconds at the bottom. Exactly. You can see, you can see some hesitating here. And at, at this part here, it was you could feel that she is basically jogging. Uh, she took it very, very calmly. And uh, But here she noticed that she has <laughs> to speed up again just in time in order to defend this third position. Yeah, Calvin Rasti on the way in. We're going to look out for Marika Taney into yeah. the arena very, very soon. And the atmosphere here, for here, very good. Here she is, part of this. Uh, you know, they've been fairly solid, all of these. Uh, this team from Calvin Rasti just kind of ticking along uh, in amongst the top ten are going to be rewarded just, with a top five. You could, you could. That's kind of as you would maybe kind of, expect from this team. But they missed the decisive points. Mm. Every time they had the chance to get back, they kind of did a small mm. mistake. Mm. Uh, you could feel that Marika Taini had the chance uh, uh, several times uh, to get ahead of New Darlin. But then she did mistakes every now and then. Uh, it wasn't really there when she was needed. And uh, in the end, yeah, this is the consequence. You end up in the fifth position instead of third position. Yeah, so Marika Taney is going to head in towards this arena. 
very very soon it will be uh, top five then here for Calvin Rasky the Finnish team a strong squad for them The Calvin Rasti team, City of Kalundri, Siri Silverloin and Ida Hapala, Me and Itanen, Marika Taini. In here, the gap then. At 8.44. Dropping just a place there. What other teams are we looking uh, towards next? Oh, a little bit of a group, I think, There's on the way. There's quite a big group coming, but they have a few minutes to go until they are approaching this last control. So it's... Södertälje, Halden, Göteborg-Majerna, Lachten, Sunisteja, Tisaren, NTNUI. And yeah, about a minute behind, Linné as well. Some good performances in this chasing group here, especially okay. Göteborg-Majerna so was quite Winner far behind. Winner of TMHILA, be ladies, uh, relay. How does it feel? Yeah, so good. This is uh, such a... We have waited for this for so long. And I think people asked us if we have been winning before, but uh, we've been so close many times and it feels like we have been fighting so good in so many years. So I hope people feel that we deserve this. Even though we're favorites, uh, it's not just to put out the shoes. It's uh, You have to run for it too, and we did it today, and I'm really proud of the girls. And uh, what a way to win with the double also. Yeah, I was thinking that in the forest. Like this is like the worst scenario. I have to sprint finish against Ingrid, who is where I've been training a lot together in the, in the winter and so. And but it's also like a dream scenario. We are two teams, and we have seen it before. We are such such many people, and also in the third team, we have people who are possible to run the in the first team. So it's uh, incredible. We have a really good training environment, and uh, yeah, helping each other to get get better. And uh, that's why I think we have uh, two. This uh, oh, two good teams. <laughs> uh, what were your thoughts when you saw Alien on the fourth leg struggling, um, and you got a bit after New Dalen and your second team? What did you think before your race? Yeah, luckily I've been running relay before, and I know that this is uh, part of the game. So it was uh, the last relay I ran was the World Cup uh, in Norway, and uh, then I had to go out a bit uh, from behind too. Uh, it was quite unexpected. But uh, and now also I know uh, Elin is a really a, a stable runner, so I was like, okay. But th this happens to everyone, so I just have to take the opportunity to have a nice fight in the forest. Like I mean, it's more exciting to be several on the last day. <laughs> okay, thank you very much and congratulations. Thanks a lot. So we are waiting for the next group, and uh, before we will have the group that uh, I mentioned before, we also have three teams, I think, uh, Iktisa, Kore, and Sunto uh, Iveskula, uh, as we have it, them on the picture here, different route choices towards Control 14. I think it would have been an advantage for Iktisa to go down, stay on the path, play the way this advantage a little bit, now a few meters behind, and... Uh, quite far up the hill there. So uh, Lisa Risby then for Cora. Have Hornick for Iktisa. And Alexander Hornick, yeah, Iktisa, sorry, up. Vera Klemetinen for Zinta Juveskula. This is the last, there you see it, the last control. It's been a few hours for us as well. It really has. <laughs> yeah, and so it was so exciting, come. this yeah. the fight for, for the, among the leaders here that we kind oh. of didn't put so much focus on this chasing group here. But here we have it, them, and it looks good for Rispi. Mm hmm. The lead there for Kore. Jumping down the, the crag. And we have uh, Clementin just behind, and uh, so a few seconds behind those two. There is Iktisa with uh, Alexandra Hornik, but it will be among the two of them uh, between the sixth and seventh spots. So, Lisa there, Vera Clementinen. 
Lisa Lisby looks, yeah, very much in in uh, and kind of control in that six spot. Alexandra Hovannik mm -hmm. in the light blue colours. A bit of struggles here in the beginning of the course. Uh, remember control. Uh, two, I think, where she gets far too much to the left, and then same to control three, where she was off direction a bit. But uh, still, I mean, this is quite a good performance for the Lithuanian team. We'll end up in eighth position here. And you see there's no real fight for the sixth place. Uh, Lisa Riespe taking it home for Kura. getting some encouragement from there. Uh, there was no chance for him to follow well, the no. speed of it. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure you can really say anything that's going to affect any of the rest, the rest of the part of the I race mean, from I that point. I can see that she can slow down a little yeah. bit. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't want to end up in a Tunnelie uh, situation here. And after those three teams, we will have many teams to fight for the last spots within the top ten. Uh, I can spot Halt, and I can spot Lachten Suunistaya, so the Tallinn is gone, yet the Borma Jonat is around. And Tianui, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Maybe Linnea, but uh, they are off direction. So Kokora with uh, Lisa is be on the last leg. They are. Uh, haven't quite done as well as their second place uh, last year. But the team, Villa von Cruz and Frenner, Matilda Eriksson, Martina Ruf, Heiser Risby and Lisa Risby, they are going to be well, well inside that top ten. So sixth position for them. Seventh position. For Vera Klenetina and Sunta Veskila. Yeah, we saw, I think, today's Anna Shikova really climb a lot of places for their team. And this, this is, is the group fight. that you were really interested in. Mm -hmm. And you can see Halden, I think, was in the top there. We didn't see her. Yeah, and Itisa uh, so here. And Itisa here. And Itisa But Itisa first to the finish. And now the last spots in the top ten here. Uh, here we have the teams. I think we have Halden just there on yeah, the top of the picture. Uh, here is Linné as well. Oh, Elena Ros for Halden. Uh, don't have the GPS for Linné. Johanna Riedefeldt. Oh yeah, Linné in here. So Linné, Johanna Riedefeldt uh, there just ahead of Elena Ros. And this is ninth and 10th. These two teams here. They were 19th and 20th. These two teams that time with Elena Ros. Yeah, she knows how to tie the sprint finish. So Elnoros yeah. for Halden. Is Whoa, this, this is actually going to be really close here. So a lot of cheers then here for these two teams. This is ninth and tenth. So uh, Elnoros for Halden. Jana Riedefeld for uh, Linné. This will round up ninth and tenth. Fighting all the way to the end. The Swiss runner will do for her Norwegian club. And, and that's then nice and the it's fight for fight. 11th spot between Andrea Svensson and Lina Strand. Oh. Tiseren against Göteborg Majona. Uh, Tiseren into 11th position. Göteborg uh, Majona into 12th position. And Södertälje Nykvarn into 13th. And here is uh, Mina Kaupi for Latens Unistajat into 14th. It was kind of tricky because we have the GPS of Linné here, but it's so far off. <laughs> uh, uh, you could oh, feel yeah, that she is in Corretio downtown, yeah. so it was really hard to say <laughs> if she was within this group or not. Uh, and then we still here as well. This is Anu Tuomisto on the last leg here. Oh, really, I think struggling there at the end. I wonder if there's... She looked in a bit of pain, actually, there, and actually dropped nine places. You can see for her some problems out there uh, on the, the terrain. 
But um, maybe, uh, you know, a chance now to reflect on uh, what you made of the relay overall, not just the, the two winning teams, but um, kind of what we saw from a few of for these runners, I think. Oh, that looks like, I think there's an injury here. But what, what do you have a chance then to reflect on the, on the overall state of the relay? Well, it, it was kind of a, I mean, it, every time when we thought that it, it slowed down a little bit, then we started into the next leg and mm. things ja. just happened. Här har vi so, Nydalen som har kommit trea. Third place for first. Nydalen from Norway. A tough finish. What? It was a tough finish. <laughs> yes, absolutely. It was a tough finish. I thought that, that I was totally alone uh, and was happy that I could take it a bit easy in them. And then someone they just called Tove is right behind you on the uh, next, next last control. And I was just, oh. I just have to fight for it. Uh, so, yeah, really happy to take the third. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, how was the, the race from the beginning? You went out in the front. What were your thoughts? Uh, yeah, well, I know this, the Ingeri and Sara are physically stronger than me, but I tried to get the pace. But uh, then I lost Ingeri. I, I don't know what was the result. He was first? Sara first. Sara first, okay, good. But then uh, I followed Sara a bit, did a small mistake, and then I did a big mistake at the, I don't know, eight control or something. And then I thought, okay, this is a solo race. But apparently <laughs> it was not. <laughs> so I'm happy to take the third for my teammates. Yeah. Okay, fantastic effort and <laughs> congratulations. didn't make it. How, how did you say about your race? Oh yeah, it was a good race. I did a small mistake to the second control. It was really tricky there. I was standing like yeah, maybe 30 meters from the control and you're standing and <laughs> looking and uh, but otherwise it was a good race and yeah it was a bit uh, to uh, be, uh, <laughs> not take the it in the finish but I was quite alone and then I saw her just, just in the end and it was a bit too long, I did what I could, but uh, yeah, I, I need to be closer. <laughs> yeah, you really pushed hard and she was very stressed for having you behind. But what do you say, fourth place for Sura Tuna, are you satisfied? Yeah, we are super happy, everyone in the team have done great races, so we are really happy with the, the relay. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks. Great to hear then from some of the other top teams. We'll, we'll leave you watching some more of our, our teams coming towards the finish. Uh, but uh, we will soon, we will, we're going to go and take a break yeah. because we've got, the, we've got the men's relay to come I up. Mean, we've we got are not the even team halfway relay. through. No, we're not, we're not. We've got the whole night still to come. You think that there's been some drama in this relay. It's not, you know, there's going to be a whole load more of that coming up as well. So we're going to take a break. We're going to be back in um, about two and a half hours, ready to push through the whole night. I think you're going to go and have a nap, Jonas. Definitely. Yeah, and then, uh, then we'll, we'll see what we can do. I hope you've enjoyed uh, this women's relay here at Tia Mila. We certainly enjoyed calling all of the action, and we will be back very, very so soon. So don't forget to set the watch oh. in order to be ready again Absolutely. at uh, half past eight. Half past eight local time. We will be there. All right. We will be back very soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
Köpingshop. Före det är alltså nu dagens andra lag. Det är 56 lag som har gått i mål och fått godkänt. Förvarnade är också Västerviks andra lag, Espon Sontas andra lag och Kåres andra lag, IKHPs andra lag. Det är 60 lag i mål och eh, den här ska alldeles strax dyka upp för målgång.
hade Oko och Kåre då, Ronja Ljungåker på en eh, 63 plats. KHPs andra lag, Evelina Svensson har 64. Vi väntar på Forum Tisvilde från Danmark. Raja med en ryggmänt i förvarnade också. 64 godkända lag in. Runt i Svidoko med Amanda Falkweber från Danmark blir det 6 i år 5. Femåttis. med ryggmänt i förvarnade Mina Ytjejnen, FK Göjnarna, Maris Olvegård, Sävedalens andra lag, Filippas på nere.
Ja, vi hade Rajma Rykmen till 66 är mål, FK Göingarna 67, Sävedalen Sandra Lov 68, MT nu i nu fjärde laget på en 69 plats på Sunta Jöväskyrets andra lag. Med Jannica Pojkonen blev 70 lag. Sunta Jöväskyrets andra lag. Sunta Jöväskyrets andra lag. Sunta Jöväskyrets andra lag. Och så väntar vi på Nydalens tredje lag. Och Tullinges första lag med Johanna Byr. lag som har gett sig ut på den sista sträckan. Tulling idag 71 med Johanna Bylund som ankare. Och Nydalens tredje lag Ronja Göklund 72. Uppsala-orientering. Tina Kallesson är också förvarnade från Oslo. Som det 73 då.
Vi närmar oss 100 lag då i de klassen. Vi kommer ta de som har kommit i mål på slutet här. Vi sitter och väntar på en prisutdelning. Det är 92 lag som har gått in som har fått godkänt av tävlingen. Vi hade Tullinge 79 lag, KV är 80 underlag, Ärla 81, Toron Sonistad 82, Angel Emirankor i 83, MS Parmas andra lag 84, Corravines andra lag 85, Skogslöparna är 86, Kolinets fjärde lag 87, 88, Lynx 2, GMOKs tredje lag 89, Tolleded Utby är 90, Falköpings AIK är 91, Rastik har åts andra lag 92. Så har vi det här Halden, Sömne och Sångdalen 3 är 94, Väckarladen, Vajkot 90 och fjärde lag. Och... Eh, 95, Fredrikstad Kiklubb. 96 KFM Örebro, 97 Växjö OK och också på samma tid Södertälje Nykvarn 2, 99 OK, nej det var inte det, det var faktiskt en helt annan ställning. Jag ska ta upp ett lag i det, det var fel lista. Vi ska ta det en gång till, vi har inte fått in så många lag. Jag tyckte det var lite, stämde inte riktigt. Här stämde det. Ja, det är Falköping 76, vi kan börja Roslagen 74, sen var Halden Sögne Sångdalen var 75, det här är mål, det är det. Vi hade Nydalen 4 på en 77 plats, Ärla 78, Okarenen 79, Angel Nemen Ankori var 80 underlag, Toron Zonista 81, Oka Skogsjortarna 82, Tolleryd Utby 83. 84 var GM Okas tredje lag, Lynx 2 var 85, Södertälje Nykvarns andra lag var 86, Fredrikstad 87, Okolinies fjärde lag 88, KFM Örebro 89, Okotyr 90, Ravines andra lag 91, OK 77 92 och Okorenens andra lag var 93, det är de vi har fått in. Även om det står 99 på tavlan, det är några lag som diskas lite här och varstans också. Vi har förvarning på Sundsvalls andra lag, MT Enris femte lag och Snättring SK är också på väg mot mål. Tar in hundra lag så ska vi börja förbereda prisutdelning så småningom också för damernas stafett. Och domkavlen, den, den har alltså 19 och 15, det är kvart över sju. Sen prisutdelning för de tio bästa lagen och 19 ska det enligt programmet vara en omstart också. Det är om cirka fem minuter, jag vet inte hur man har tänkt organisera det men det får ni följa med ni som är nere i växlingsområdet. Ja, här går de in för omstart, ser jag. Och då ska vi väl snart få alla återstående ut. Så är det någon som inte har gått ut nu? Kom det en in och ville växla här. Men de lägger till och drar ifrån tid så det ska ordna sig. Alla som inte har sprungit ut alltså, det är omstart om två minuter nu. Sokos andra lag, 94 lag i mål. Här kommer MT NUI 5. Caroline Eune är 95. Då är de bästa femte lag. Det är ganska övertygad om.
Nettringen var det 96 laget i mål. Vi väntar på Rasti och sitt andra lag. Vi kallar det Veikots första lag och Kålmården 2, Tampren Pyrinte 3. Och då ska vi snart ha 100 lag i mål. Och vi väntar på omstartat. Vi vill lycka till det som ska ge er iväg nu på den sista sträckan. Rasti Josits kakosjoukko ei ryskemene seitsemäs. Joo, te stoi on siisten platsena blandom hundra bästa. Kolmoiden Sandra Lag, vi nitti ottonde lag, ote va Jenni Röygoor. Välkom Jenni! Vai klöp kumpis me Jenni mun avun? Jenni Polsson. Vekalade Veikko, Tampren Pyrinte, kolmosjoukko ei ryksan kymmenes. Yrksas kymmenes, yrksas. Ja. Nummer satta. Då har vi hundra lag i mål. One hundred team have completed the relay now, and the prize giving ceremony for the ten best teams will be a quarter past seven at nineteen fifteen. Och då gör vi klart för de start alldeles strax för de som inte har gett sig ut. På den sista sträckan, eller möjligen också sträcka fyra. Och när de sticker iväg så tar vi en liten paus härifrån och väntar på prisutdelning om cirka 15 minuter. Lycka till alla som ska i omstart.
Mitt liv som skogsägare har inte börjat än. Men morfar säger att det började för ungefär hundra år sedan. Då var det nog svårt att äga skog. Och ensam. Det är det inte idag. När två föreningar nu har blivit en så har vi blivit många fler som tänker på skogen. Och min familjs bästa. En dag är det min tur att bli skogsägare. Min tur att hamna om skogen. Så att den kan ta hand om oss. I hundra år till. Vi är norrlänningar. Vi ser tid på ett annat sätt. Vi använder den på rätt sätt. Till det vi tycker om. Det vi tycker är viktigt. Och det vi själva väljer. Det är norrländsk tid.
Ja, då hälsar vi hjärtligt. Då hälsar vi hjärtligt välkomna till prisutdelning för damkaven 10 mila 2023. Och invigningstalare är Maria Broman, vd för Visit Skellefteå. Tack så mycket. Alltså vilket arrangemang och vilka rafflande tävlingar. Men det är ju bara att bocka och buga för IFK Göteborg. Seger i ungdomskavlen och dubbelt upp i damkavlen. Och fler spännande målgångar är på väg in här. Och vilken ära för mig att få vara här och vara med och dela ut pris till segrarna i 10 milas damkavle 2023. I Skellefteå pågår just nu en helt unik samhällsomvandling och eh, faktiskt den största i sitt slag i modern tid. Och vi behöver bli många fler Skellefteåbor. Så om Skellefteå gett mer smak under de här dagarna är ni varmt välkomna tillbaka. Både som nya invånare och som besökare. En viktig del i en sån här samhällsomvandling det är upplevelser och evenemang. Inte minst olika idrottsevenemang och bakom dem hängivna föreningar och ett rikt föreningsliv. Jag vill verkligen passa på att rikta Skellefteås tack till Skellefteå orienteringsklubb som har genomfört det här, eller genomför det här tio mila med bravur. Och det har varit eh, otroligt spännande att ända sedan 2017 fått följa Skellefteå OK på den här resan fram mot tio mila. Både imponerande och inspirerande. Så stort tack till Skellefteå orienteringsklubb för de här väl genomförda tävlingarna. Och också stort tack till övriga klubbar som har varit med och arrangerat både Team League-tävling och Stadsprint. Och tack till alla er funktionärer och volontärer. Och sist men inte minst stort tack till alla tävlande som är med och gör de här dagarna i Skellefteå till en riktig folkfest. Så vårt varmaste tack till er och välkommen åter, säger vi från Skellefteå. Nu är det dags att kora, kora och ha prisutdelning för segrarna i 10 milas damkavle 2023. Så att vi drar helt enkelt igång prisutdelningen, inte sant Mikael? Tack så mycket Maria och förutom Maria så får vi hjälp här av Mikael Staffa som är vd för Boliden. Och då börjar vi på tionde plats. OK Linné laget. Nionde plats har vi Haldens SK.
På åttonde plats, 8th place, X-Tisa. Och en sjunde plats, seventh place, Sonta Ljuväskele! På en sjätte plats från Falun i Dalarna, Oko Kåre! Och så har vi på femte plats, fifth place, från Finland, Kalavan Rusty! På en fjärde plats från Bålänge men en mäktig avslutning, Stora Tona OK! Och så har vi topp tre kvar och då har vi ett norsk lag som verkligen satte färg på den här tävlingen. Nydalens SK! Och det var ovist in i det sista vilket lag som skulle komma på andra plats. Och nu gäller det att jag säger rätt lag här för på en andra plats i Göteborg lag 2.
Segrare i Teomilans damkavel 2023, EFK Göteborg, lag 1! Och medan vi har alla pristagare här uppe på borta stå i Skellefteåkraft hemma stå ursäkta på i Skellefteåkraft arena så ger vi dessa ett fyrfaldigt leve det lever hippie hurra